If I'm North Texas, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, run Brandon Burt uh, about 50 times that game. <laughs> he, he lasts two out of the last three games. He's rushed for 200 yards. Uh, UNLV's really struggled, giving up 220 yards per game. So uh, if I'm North Texas, I'll run that, run that big boy. North Texas, 245 yards rushing in its eight wins, 62 and a half in its four losses. Watch the line of scrimmage. Time to get you to the heart of Dallas Bowl next on ESPNU. This is Capital One Bowl Week. It's a new year and a new dawn for two programs once considered an afterthought. But now both UNLV and North Texas come into the historic Cotton Bowl ready to make team history. The Rebels are led by strong-willed senior quarterback Caleb Herring, who helped turn UNLV's season around back in September. Meanwhile, just 35 minutes from campus, 1,000-yard rusher Brandon Bird and the Mean Green will have a pseudo home field advantage as North Texas looks for a monumental program win. It's the 2014 Heart of Dallas Bowl next. Welcome to the Heart of Dallas Bowl, presented by Plains Capital Bank. Two teams with terrific turnarounds from a season ago, UNLV and North Texas, hoping to carry their newly found momentum into 2014. It's the Heart of Dallas Bowl, presented by Plains Capital Bank. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to the Big D here in Dallas. Happy New Year to you and your families, alongside former Georgia All-American Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Clay Matvick. Don Davenport will be with us shortly. These two teams are happy to be here and playing on New Year's Day. It might sound a little bit like exaggeration, but we talked to both teams, and they feel like this might be the biggest game in their histories. Well, you look at both of these programs, they're not mainstays in the postseason. In fact, you're looking at, well, better part of a decade before either one of these programs were able to make bowl eligibility. They fought, they scratched, they clawed their way there. UNLV, three straight two-win seasons. The fact that they're bowl eligible is a landmark event under Bobby Howe. And you look at what Dan McCartney's been able to do in only three years, turning the fortunes around for North Texas. And the fact that it's played in Texas and the meaningfulness that that has on their recruiting efforts, I think all that adds to a very, very important event here for both of these schools. Both of these teams had losing records a year ago, but they got it turned around and in a hurry thanks to great leadership. For more on that, let's go down to Dawn. Guys, just to let you know, Clay, watching warm-ups, you can see how excited both of these teams are to be here. Talking to the head coaches, they credit senior leadership and buy-in for their team's successes this season. For UNLV, head coach Bobby Houck said he saw the light come on, and it starts with senior quarterback Caleb Herring, who said he's a guy that leads by example, and that's made a huge difference for his program. Now, for North Texas head coach Dan McCartney said this is all his seniors you're going to see 22 of them suit up here today he said when he got here two years ago he felt like it was his coaching staff that was having to lead he saw that change this year his seniors took ownership and clay these are two senior classes that really want to put that final stamp on their legacy you bet Don and happy new year to you and for North Texas this is a de facto home game but UNLV's got some Texans on its roster too and two really stand out on offense they're really going to figure prom Dominantly, when you look at Devontae Davis at the receiver position and Tim Cornette, the running back for the Rebels. Now, Tim Cornette, he's the pacemaker for the ground game that UNLV is going to employ, that they've employed all season long, 1,200 plus yards. Was he able to generate with his legs? He's a power runner, but can get separation. And Devontae Davis, who is a tremendous weapon as a receiver, big, long frame, who really came into his age this year, grew into the position, and can still have room to grow. They want him back in next year because he figured very prominently in their offensive fortunes this season. And a big reason North Texas is in the postseason, special teams. Five special teams touchdowns this year. Breland Chancellor is going to be fun to watch in the return game. Well, he's such a nifty runner. When you look at him, very, very quick, but he can get separation. The quickness is what makes him so dangerous, I think, as a return man. And this is something that he grew into this role. He wasn't very enthusiastic as a returner, and so he has really made his presence felt more so this season in that regard. But also as a receiver, he's going to be a primary target today in their passing game. Watch UNLV in their defense. They're very aggressive, play a lot of press man, taking care of Breland Chancellor. First FBS bowl game for coach Bobby Houck at UNLV. Great success at FCS Montana. 
from 03 to 09. Struggled his first three years at UNLV, but he broke through this season. There's his counterpart today, Dan McCarney. Knows how to build winners. Helped Hayden Fry do that at Iowa. Barry Alvarez at Wisconsin. Took Iowa State to five bowl games. Now he's brought North Texas back. UNLV won the toss. And they elected to defer. Nikolai Bornan has it on the tee. Breland Chancellor, who we just talked about, very dangerous in the return game, is back deep. Carlos Harris is also back there. Longest bull droughts entering the season. UNLV and North Texas make that list, and they finally break through that glass ceiling this year. They weren't the only team that got through. There were a couple others as well. You see here Tulane and Washington State making bowl games this season. Washington State so close to not only returning to the postseason play but getting a victory a heartbreaking loss to Colorado State obviously Tulane as well dropping a very close one uh, in the New Orleans Bowl but you look at these teams here today and this really is a watermark event not only for the two current coaching staffs but for these programs going forward feels like we're in Denton a little bit a lot of green in the stadium here. The historic Cotton Bowl. Happy New Year from the heart of Dallas Bowl in Dallas, Texas. We're underway. And Breland Chancellor trying to feel it. Outside of the end zone, but it rolls in. It's going to be a touchback. So the offense will start from the 25 for North Texas. And the quarterback is Derek Thompson. Led them to an 8 and 4 year, 6 and 2 in Conference USA. First year in Conference USA after 12 years in the Sun Belt. And he did a good job as the third year starter of this up tempo offense. You know, we're visiting with the coaching staff of North Texas yesterday. You look at his numbers this season for Derek Thompson 13 interceptions, a little bit unsettling, but they say, look, what about seven of those are on our quarterback. Otherwise, it's either a bad route, it's a tip pass, it's a Hail Mary. They're really pleased with the progression that they've seen in the quarterback play by their senior. 2,640 passing yards this season, fifth most in team history. He likes to pass a lot on first down, too. We'll see if they do that here. First play from scrimmage for North Texas, and they are going to throw. Thompson steps up in the pocket, goes downfield. He's got a man at the 40. It's Chancellor. You said it, Matt, not only in the return game, but as a receiver, he can be a weapon. He's a guy to watch. They need to pay attention to him. Obviously, he's going to figure prominently as a passing game. But this uh, first down passing that could be dangerous for North Texas. They're an excellent run team. UNLV has struggled to stop the run. And so first down, it's pick your poison for Mike Canales as an offensive play caller for North Texas. After the gain of 19, first down from their own 44, opening series for the Mean Green. It's going to be a run play. Brandon Bird gets his first touch. And he's going to pay the price. He is forced back. No gain. There's Jordan Sparkman, the defensive end, to make the initial contact as we take a look at the impact players. And Bird, best season of his career. Uh, excellent season. Once again, a thousand yard rusher, teammate of Breland Chancellor. And his counterpart as an impact player is going to be Tony Maka in the middle of this UNLV Rebel defense. He's going to be very active today versus North Texas's ground game. He'll be in the backfield to the right of Thompson. Second down and 10. Thompson complete again out to midfield. There's Darnell Smith, the leading receiver for the Mean Green. Over 700 yards and three touchdowns this year. He gets nine. So it's going to be third down and manageable now for North Texas in plus territory. And that's something that has really changed the fortunes of the Mean Green offensively this year is getting it to third and manageable. Close to half of their third down attempts last year were third and eight yards or more. This season, only a third of them now. And third and three or less, they've got a 60-plus conversion rate. They do an excellent job when it's third and short. You see 46% on the year. They're going to run it. Bird. Trying to pick his way Pretty close for Brandon Bird in North Texas. And Penny Vea, the strong safety, made the tackle, but North Texas is able to move the chains. It's going to be an aspect of this game. If North Texas continue to, to enjoy success on first and second down, can UNLV avoid allowing those tough yards in the short yardage game? 
as Bird again. Penalty flag down. He finds a seam. And he gets away on his way to the end zone. Brandon Bird and pushed out inside the five yard line. But there is a marker down at the 45. And our referee is Ron Snodgrass from the MAC. It's a MAC officiating crew here today. Personal foul. Chop uh, Offense. Number 50. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's the center, Caden Kirby. And you see that sometimes on power plays where you've got pulling offensive linemen, these, these back blocks. And if you're engaged with the other offensive linemen, the fellow blocker can't go low. Caden Kirby at center. They really like the way he's played this year. A freshman only amongst some of their veteran players and it's the middle of that North Texas mean green offensive front that they feel like is the heart and soul of their football team Mason Y Barbo Cyril Lemon and in this instance Caden Kirby getting a mention for all the wrong reasons. So instead of first down and goal to go from inside the five it's now back at their own 39 yard line that wipes out a 43 yard run first and 25 for North Texas. Derek Thompson back to throw. Penalty markers down, and Thompson is down too. This old line has been terrific for the Mean Green this year. Only 10 sacks allowed, but Mark Garrett got in there. Now, of course, there is a marker down. We'll see what that's about. It's a loss of nine on the play. Illegal motion. Offense, number 80. Penalties declined. Second down. John Darnell Smith, the receiver. They've done such a good job. Really only two sacks according to the coaching staff, but you see the pocket collapsing. Really the interior portion of the offensive front incapable of keeping a clean pocket for Derek Thompson. Something that they haven't seen a lot of this year. Thompson usually has time to work, and if he doesn't, he delivers the football quickly, incapable of doing it there. Not a lot of plays for second and 34. Antoine Jimerson getting his first touch. He'll get a chunk of it back as he gets across the 35 to the 36. And a gain of six for Antoine Jimerson, team's second leading rusher, product of DeSoto High School here in Dallas. Said it before, North Texas very happy to get this bid. 96 of the 105 players on the Mean Green roster are from the state of Texas. That's 91% of the total unit. It's important for both of these teams, really, when you look at it. The key contributors for UNLV are Texas boys as well. Five receiver set empty backfield. Thompson on third and 28. Got it to Winrick Pleasant, the senior receiver out of Mesquite, Texas. Tim Hassan, the strong side linebacker, brings him down after a gain of eight. So it's fourth down for North Texas. They were on the field for a long time on the opening series, Matt, but eventually have to bring the punt unit out. Well, so they're able to accomplish one of the things that Mike Canales wanted to do, offensive coordinator for North Texas. He wanted to possess the football. He wanted to pick up first downs because he recognizes that UNLV has weapons on offense, but the penalties already, and of course the sack, putting behind them then down in distance. Blake Mosick on for the first time to punt. It's going to bounce at the 20. Keith Whiteley lets it roll, and it's down inside the five-yard line. Blake Mosick, the Conference USA all-freshman punter from Sulphur Springs, Texas, puts it inside the five, a kick of 51 yards. Nice top spin on that kick, too, huh, Clay? You look at it, kick forward. If nothing else, you see North Texas able to penetrate the red zone, scoring opportunity, penalties, a sack, another penalty takes them out of that chance, but they flip the field from a field position standpoint and force UNLV to carry almost the length of the field to try to get into the end zone. Now here comes UNLV's offense for the first time, and they've got a long field. Caleb Herring, the senior starter. Send four receivers, two to either side. He looks to throw on first down. How about that? A little hook and ladder. Ball's loose on the floor. And UNLV lucks out. Devontae Davis and Tim Cornett trying a little trick play on the first play from scrimmage. How about that? You know, we talked about both of these guys in the open. Davis and Cornett, old teammates from high school, teammates in college. 
big pieces of the offense. Why not get them both a touch on the same play in the opening shot? Somehow they managed to get four yards on that play. That's what happens when coaches have all that extra time during bowl preparation. A lot of trick plays get devised as Herring keeps. And he's about a yard short of the first down. Herring was not the starter on opening day, but took over the job after UNLV had an 0-2 start. Led the Rebels to wins in seven of the last ten games. Came in for a struggle Nick Sherry in the first quarter of week three against Central Michigan, and it's been his job ever since. Third down and two. He keeps Caleb Herring. First down out close to the 20-yard line. He's a former wide receiver. And he's been playing quarterback and wide receiver since coming to UNLV, and he moves the chains here. And to say that he's a dual threat, that's a legitimate comment, not just as a scrambler. Now we've seen two runs on a zone read look where really they're able to get the ball in their playmaker's hands. They try to have three, basically the three playmakers on their offense touch the football already in this game. Play fake. Herring steps up. Downfield has a man caught at the 40. To the 49-yard line, there is Devontae Davis. Already we said that if Devontae Davis can get loose, and it was on a double move, that time he was working on Will Wright, who had dropped in his linebacker position. Missed tackle there by Laramie Lee. And Devontae Davis already making his presence felt in the passing game. 1,200 receiving yards this season, given 30 on that play. First and ten, Herring. This is complete to Marcus Sullivan. For the 43-yard line of North Texas, Sullivan missed the first four games for personal reasons. Still managed to become Mountain West Conference honorable mention. Had a great year after he was eligible. Yeah, and, and similar to Breland Chancellor, a tremendous return man as well. So when guys get touches like Marcus Russell and, or Sullivan in space, they can make you pay. Herring, little play fake, gets it to the receiver, Mata L.A., and he's got a first down, Micah Mata L.A. Now to the 35-yard line as we look at the impact players. We just saw Sullivan moments ago make a catch, and Marcus Trice, an excellent free safety for the Mean Green. Marcus Trice is a guy where you look, watch North Texas on defense. John Skladani likes to play the run with numbers. Right now the Rebels, though, gaining their yards through the air. Herring throwing again, too tall for Sullivan, and he's hit out of bounds. A penalty flag comes in. And the Mean Green faithful getting a little angry here. Looks like it's going to be the first penalty against North Texas today. On the defensive side of the ball. Dan McCarney waiting to hear as we take a look at the hit on the sideline. You know, the real question will be is personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. Number eight. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, they got the number wrong. They called the penalty on Trice, but we know it to be number 11, Will Wright. Outside linebacker. Yeah, a couple of plays now. Will Wright beaten in coverage on the previous big play to Devontae Davis. Yeah, that ball, I think what the officials are saying is look, that was clearly not a catchable ball. You knew he didn't receive it. No sense in hitting it. I, I, my concern was were they thinking targeting? Did he lead with the crown of his head? As it is, it's unnecessary roughness. And already we've seen. Penalties figure prominently in this ball game for North Texas. Yeah, they had three on offense, which stalled the series out. Now the first on defense for the Mean Green, and here's UNLV in the red zone now. They're at the 20, first down and 10. Herring hand off to Tim Cornette, bounces to the outside, good run. He's got another first down, a gain of 11 for Tim Cornette. Second team, all Mountain West. He was a sprinter in high school. When he gets that edge, he's got 4-4 speed. He can uh, be tough to catch. That's what we were mentioning earlier, is that he can run between the tackles, but when given room, he can really get some separation, able to capture the edge in the corner and get outside. 
see right now, North Texas, you know, they're not very multiple on defense, but they're sound. But right now, the speed of UNLV hurting the mean green in an area where they usually thrive in the red zone. Herring play fake, throws to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Sullivan. Marcus Sullivan, his fifth receiving touchdown of the year, and UNLV is on the board first. That was an authoritative drive by the Rebels to open this ball game. And it wasn't just like, you know, we mentioned the, the penalty, the unnecessary roughness, but the Rebels, they pretty much worked their way down the field methodically. You saw Caleb Herring, Devontae Davis, Cornette, and now Marcus Sullivan, a guy who would have figured more prominently, statistically anyway, were it not for their four missed games. Nolan Cohorst with the extra point. And UNLV leads it 7 0. An eight play, 95 yard scoring drive. In their first bowl game since 2000, the Rebels are in front. Visit watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Back here in Dallas for the game, UNLV President Neil Smatras handled the coin flip. Ironically, he is becoming president at North Texas on February 3rd. Nice tie choice, huh? Good neutral. That isn't a Christmas tie. That was for this occasion, I think. Looking like brand new. He handled that like a politician. Didn't he, though? Look at that scoring drive. Nine plays. They had to go 95 yards. They do it in three minutes. Passing touchdown. Herring to Sullivan. You know, that's not something that North Texas has allowed very often throughout this season. They're long drives. When you look at them. 75 yards or more. You don't see that versus this mean green defense field position. Could have figured probably in the 95 yard drives impressive. They're not kicking away from Chancellor. Here comes Breland Chancellor to the 20. Good kick coverage by the Rebels. He is stopped at the 21 yard line. A return of 11 yards for the Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Year. Now we'll see if this North Texas offense can square some things away. They had three penalties on their last series. Yeah, job one is get out of your own way. You know, right now, you could see both of these offenses effectively having their way with the defenses. That's a little bit more surprising given the fact that North Texas is a defensive-oriented football team. They've enjoyed great success, one of the finer units statistically in the FBS this year. UNLV went right down the football field, but it wasn't like the mean green was having difficulty moving the ball until they got behind in the down and distance due to penalty. Here's Brandon Bird. And he'll get a handful after the 25 yard line. And now we've got some angry personalities down there as you take a look at North Texas. 2013 season recap. They started two and three, finished six and one. The season highlights the great showing against Georgia, even though it was a loss. The win over Ball State also beat Conference USA champ Rice. They had five straight wins from October into November. And more penalty flags. And this is going to go against North Texas. Ball start. Now. Offense. Number 50. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Second penalty on Kirby, and one of the reasons that North Texas had such a good season is they didn't have a lot of this during the regular year. They played a lot more cleanly than what we've seen out of the Mean Green so far tonight. We're looking at a, or today rather with freshman Caden Kirby. A couple of penalties. One of them I think is more circumstantial than in anything, but a procedure penalty. We've seen two now on this offense. Brandon Bird. He's on the left side behind Antonio Johnson. Big left tackle. He'll get four back. It's Tani Maka, middle linebacker. All Mountain West Conference honorable mentioned. The linebackers are the key to this Rebels defense stitch. When you look at the way, how active they are at the second level, Tani Maka, the captain of this defense. But also what I've seen so far in this ball game is Mark Garrett, number 97, and Tyler Gaston, 99, doing a good job controlling the interior portion of the offensive line on this series. 
Third down and fairly long, seven to go. Thompson looks right, comes back left, and it sails out of bounds, and the defender got a hand on it. So now fourth down for the Mean Green. That was Matt Vignal back in the coverage. That time, miscommunication, it seemed, between the quarterback and his receiving core. One of the things that North Texas has been pleased with offensively, they protect the football, but also was the emergence of the wide receiver position. They had injuries last year, underperformance last year, but there, the receiving core and the quarterback, Derek Thompson, on different pages. 51-yard punt for Masik his last time out. High snap, gets it away. Whiteley is back, and he fumbled it. Ball is loose, and North Texas has it at the 42-yard line of UNLV. Zed Evans recovers for North Texas, and they're in great shape now. That's two great plays. Maybe the two best plays by North Texas have been by their punt team. One of them downing the football down on the five-yard line. North Texas incapable to hold defensively. Right there, Keith Whiteley is a guy who's a game breaker for them, a difference maker. And in this instance, it was for the opponent. We've talked about North Texas and the special teams, how great it has been this year. Talked to Dan McCartney, gives a lot of the credit to Tommy Perry, the special teams coordinator. Now they're sitting pretty at the 42-yard line of UNLV, first and 10. Jimerson in the backfield. He gets the handoff, finds some room on the right side, and then it slows down at the 40. Gets to the 39. Mike Horsey makes the tackle. We see the meaningfulness of the special teams this year. Tommy Perry, one of the changes that Dan McCartney made was an emphasis on special teams, a new special teams coach. And not only in the in the return game, they've done a good job in the coverage units, blocking kicks, returning kicks. They've had two this season, one in the kickoff return game, one in the punt return game, both by Chancellor. But it's been the coverage units that have figured prominently in this one so far. And Chancellor on the end around first down, and he steps out at the 30. And he's quick. He's got three 100-yard receiving games this year. But they find ways to get him the football. It's not always through the air. Another way to get him a touch. You know, we mentioned early in the drive, prior to the punt, seems as if Derek Thompson not in sync right now in the passing game. So why not give the ball to Breland Chancellor on a handoff? Easy to make that completion. Let him take it right out of your hand. And with his speed, he's able to capture the edge and loosen up the UNLV defense. First and 10 from the UNLV 30. Now Thompson wants to air it out. Drops it off short to Jimerson. And steps out of a tackle, gets to the 25-yard line. A school record 4,900 yards total offense coming into the day. Very balanced, 2,700 passing, 2,200 rushing, and scoring almost 32 points per game. They'll figure out ways to beat you, both running and passing. You look at that guy. He's a spark plug for them. He's something that can change. One of those guys that can ignite the offense. They've seen a lot of different contributors in their running game. Jimerson being one of them behind Brandon Bird. There's Chancellor again. First down, and he twists his way to the 15-yard line. A gain of 10 for Breland Chancellor. When you look at it, here's Breland Chancellor. Right here, multiple formations by North Texas. They're going to come in, give you a lot of different looks. They're going to line up receivers in the backfield. They had two lead blockers in front. Yet another way to get the ball in his hands, knowing that with his speed and with his ability to make people miss in space, he can pick up first downs and then potentially break big plays for you. Trying to make UNLV pay after fumbling the punt in their own territory. They've got it first down, 10 at the 15. Here's North Texas giving it to Brandon Bird, and he stood up after a yard pickup. This defense has improved for UNLV under Tim Houck. They're trying to make a stand here. Just over three minutes to go in the first quarter. Houck is UNLV's third defensive coordinator in three years. They've also had 
three offensive coordinators in three years. Bobby Howe very happy to have things settling down now. His brother's on board, and things are really looking up as they're in a January bowl game. Backed up here, though. Second and nine. Again, an end around. Misdirection to Carlos Harris. Ball comes out inside the five, and it's loose. Who's got it? UNLV says they have it, but no, North Texas is able to recover. It's Mason Y. Barbo, the big left guard who scrambles to recover. What a shot by Taj Hassan. Right there on the goal line, you mentioned the defense needing to get a stop. That was a big hit, though, to deny the end zone. And Harris is still not up. We'll check on him when we come back to the heart of Dallas Bowl. Happy New Year. Capital Bank, Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. The house that Doak built. Stoke Walker, 1948 Heisman Trophy winner from SMU. They call the old Cotton Bowl the house that he built. That's where we are today for the Heart of Dallas Bowl. Good news and bad news for North Texas. The good news is Carlos Harris is okay after fumbling inside the five, and North Texas did recover it. But the bad news for North Texas, they may have lost their quarterback on that same play. It's the recovery by Mason Y. Barbo, but Derek Thompson got injured on the play. We'll talk more about that in a moment as Andrew McNulty comes in. The sophomore from Iowa City, Iowa, is now in the game for the Mean Green. The good news is, is that North Texas runs the football in the red zone. This is where they ground and pound. The change of quarterback, not as significant. And they will run it. It's Jimerson. Straight ahead. And he got in. Touchdown, North Texas. The play I mentioned. Earlier on this possession, what ended up being an extended possession after a, a fumble on a punt. But North Texas, an interior offensive front, penalties, incapable of picking up some tough yards at times. But now, Y Barbo, Mason Y Barbo, not only assisting and opening up holes for a touchdown run, but also a key fumble recovery to maintain possession to let the Mean Green get back on the board. It appears the officials want to take a second yep. look. I think maybe Jimerson's knee was down before he broke the play. Antoine Jimerson, a product of Dallas High School football. It appears that the knee is down right there before the ball crosses the plane. To me, yeah, I, I agree. I think he is short. And the key piece of it being it looked like his right knee prior to that final surge before he's able to break that plane obviously and you look at it the ruling on the field being a touchdown but I do think that that's enough video evidence for them to, to overturn this ruling. Ken Baker is our replay official. He got the same look you did at home. Regardless, you know, to me, it looks like the, the touchdown is going to be overturned. But we're talking about another couple of cracks at the end zone and on the inch yard line, in the inch line, if, there, if there's such a thing. When you look at it, I think the nose of the football will be just shy of the plane. Like you said, though, Texas very good at running inside the red zone. They've got 26 touchdowns and 39 trips. Uh, I didn't, you know, you don't mean to diminish a potential injury to your quarterback and Derek Thompson. At the same time, if there was a circumstance under which it could happen, this is an ideal one. Good time to hand else. it over to the backup. Absolutely. Let him turn around, hand the football off. After review, the runner's knee was down and the ball was short of the goal line. The second down at the half yard line. So take the points off the board. Jimerson is going to come back out. I'll try it again. Second down and goal to go from the half yard line. Eighth play of the drive coming up for Dan McCarney. 
in the mean green. And they're going to go big package. They did this earlier on their third down where they were able to convert. In that instance, Brandon Bird kind of had to pick his way into the offensive front. But right now, North Texas, this is their comfort zone to be able to run the football from this yardage in. And it's a touchdown for Jimerson. Took an extra play. Antoine gets in eventually for his seventh rushing touchdown of the year and North Texas is now on the board. What a big answer by the mean green you give up a 95 yard touchdown drive penalties undo your offensive efforts in the opening possession. You're able to pick up yet another big special teams play off a punt and convert off a couple of really creative offensive play calls. Zach Paul sophomore kicker ties this game up at seven Antoine Jimerson and the North Texas meet green in front of a lot of fans here in Dallas today are on the board now Back at the heart of Dallas Bowl at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. North Texas has tied it up at seven. But they may have a severely injured quarterback on their hands. Derek Thompson on that last series suffered an injury. This is the play it happened on for more. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Play he did. He headed over to the sideline. You could see he was in pain. He said, he told the trainers that something popped in his knee. It's that right knee. The trainer said, he popped out his patella, but they have now taped it back up. He's a senior. He said, I'm good to go. Let's go. He is limping just a bit on the sideline, so we'll have to see how he does. Yeah, take a team of horses to keep him out of this game today. The senior wants to play in this game for his team, and uh, looks like he's going to try and come back. With that said, Andrew McNulty handled things capably as they got in the end zone on a running play to tie it up. Turn around, hand it off. They might find a team of horses near the Texas State Fairgrounds. <laughs> That's right. Bouncing ball handled by Marcus Sullivan on the kickoff return. UNLV's all-time kickoff return leader gets it across the 20-yard line. Two of the nation's most physical teams collide in the granddaddy of them all. Big Ten champ Michigan State sets its sights on its first Rose Bowl win since 88, while the Cardinals seek their second in a row. 100th Rose Bowl game, number five Stanford, number four Michigan State coverage today, 4:30 Eastern on ESPN. The last three seasons, rushing yards, total yards, third down percentage, leading the FBS in all three categories. You wonder how long they're going to be able to hold on to Pat Narduzzi, their defensive coordinator, at Michigan State. Now he's not getting more looks at the head job for the work he's done for the Spartans defensively. UNLV going back to work on offense. Series starts at the 23 yard line. This one complete to Anthony Williams, the sophomore receiver. It's a gain of five for the Rebels. We continue to see the passing game figure prominently for UNLV. Tim Rosenbaugh, offensive coordinator, first year under Bobby Hawk's Hawk staff this year, knew that he had to shake things up. And Caleb Herring and his passing accuracy has been a big piece of what they've done this year. Tim Cornette. Lowers his head, gets close to a first down, stopped about a yard short. Zach Orr, the middle linebacker, there he is, the senior captain. He's all over the field for the mean green. The son of former Washington Redskins tight end Terry Orr, who also played in the Cotton Bowl 30 years ago today when he played for the Texas Longhorns. Third down and two. Cornette. First down. That was a hard run for Cornette. To the 37 yard line, right on the tackle. The great penetration. North Texas is able to pierce the backfield. Cornette's having to make moves before, before he even reaches the line of scrimmage. And it took Will Wright from his linebacking position to keep him from gaining even more yards and breaking loose on a short yardage run. Caleb Herring. Design quarterback run. Said before, he's fairly nifty on his feet, but you got to have room to run, and he didn't in that circumstance. So it's second down and nine. That's a challenge when you're facing a running quarterback. UNLV will be the first quarter. 
Went with an empty backfield, and Caleb Herring is a guy who can take the football as well. North Texas prepared in that instance. So we have played 15 minutes on this New Year's Day. Good game so far in the heart of Dallas Bowl, presented by Plains Capital Bank, UNLV 7, North Texas 7. When the going gets tough and it's just... I said my mouth was on fire. 99 cents has never been hotter with two new spicy Chipotle sandwiches. Now that's better. We have done it. Here's UNLV head coach Bobby Houck in his fourth year. As we get ready to start the second quarter, his team on its last drive took it down the field 95 yards for a touchdown. The drive after that didn't happen because they muffed the fumble. So this is the only drive they've had, and it was an impressive one, Stiff. Yeah, they really were able to move the football very effectively. They opened the game with a little trickery and attempted a hook and lateral. A little bit of live ball, but they were able to maintain possession, and Caleb Herring distributed the football well. Devontae Davis and Marcus Sullivan. Tim Cornette on the ground was able to capture the edge, but only their second offensive possession, and we're already in the second quarter. Second down and eight for the Rebels. Thrown out to the left side, there's Davis. And he's going to be stopped pretty much in his tracks at the 45-yard line. Kenny Byers, the corner, was a true freshman walk-on just a season ago. He makes the tackle. The stability at cornerback has been key for this North Texas defense as the season has worn on. And it took a little bit of turnover. That's something that just about every coach pointed out. James Jones and Kenny Byers stepping up at that corner position. Not only are they pretty good in coverage, but excellent open field tacklers, as we saw there versus Davis. They need two yards. Heron gets it. Out of the backfield, Cornette. Decent receiving running back. Hauls it in, a gain of five. They'll move the sticks as they're at the 50-yard line now. And you can see not a lot of up-tempo. Really, so far, in visiting with UNLV yesterday, they seemed to indicate they wanted to go as fast as possible, but this time, a measured pace in this possession. There's Cornett straight ahead, and no game. The offensive coordinator for UNLV is Tim Rosenbaum, first year on the job. After a great career at Washington State, he played quarterback in the NFL. And UNLV's offense has increased by 55 yards and 10 points per game this season. We talked about new coordinators on both sides of the ball. Boy, has that paid dividends right away for Bobby Houck's team. Caleb Herring in trouble. And he is going to be sacked at the 43-yard line of UNLV by Will Wright. A loss of seven. We've seen this a couple of times. Zone read, Herring pulls it, but Richard Abbey blew up the interior portion of the offensive front and forced Herring to lose ground first. And Will Wright, who's somewhat of a hybrid at his linebacker position, was able to come up and make the tackle for a loss and get UNLV behind in the down and distance. It started really, Clay, with that first down play of no gain, something we haven't seen a lot of in this UNLV offense. They've been able to pick up yardage. They need 17 yards now, third and 17, and Herring's in trouble again. Comes back across his body, can't complete the pass. Mata L.A., the intended receiver, but now it's fourth down, and UNLV will have to punt. Great job by this mean green defense. When McCartney took this team over, this was one of the worst defensive teams in the country, and they have really turned it around. You see, a lot of it, I think, is the fact that John Skladani is two years on the job. We talk about a lot of coaching turnover on the UNLV sideline. The first time in three years that North Texas has had the same defensive coordinator in back to back seasons. So after completing his first eight passes, Herring, his first incompletion, a rugby style punt here for Logan Yunker. And it's going to travel out of bounds. Let's see where they're going to mark this. Inside the 30 yard line at the 28. North Texas has it when we come back. Tied at seven on New Year's Day here in the heart of Dallas. Say goodbye to all that paper. 
And it's Shroff in the studio coming up at 1 Eastern on ESPN. It's the Outback Bowl. Odell Beckham and LSU taking on Iowa. Just the second meeting ever between these two. And it was a year ago on this day in the Outback Bowl. Jadavion Clowney gave us his signature moment. South Carolina and Wisconsin in the Capital One Bowl. That's on ABC. All right, Anish, thank you very much. No doubt a great day of football here on this New Year's Day, and we've got another one to tell you about. Central Florida and Baylor, two programs making their BCS debut. Bryce Petty, what a year for the quarterback of the Bears. And Blake Bortles, not too shabby himself for Central Florida. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, number 15, Central Florida, number 6, Baylor tonight, 8.30 on ESPN. Derek Thompson back out there. That is good to see the quarterback for North Texas, and he wants to throw, and he's complete to Chancellor. Chancellor quickly surrounded at the 32-yard line, but Thompson went out with a knee injury. We were heard it was a patella. Don gave you the report. It apparently popped out. They got it squared away now, and he's back in the game. Well, you know, he's a senior. You know, that's one of those injuries that is likely to recur once you do it once, but he's not too concerned. Drops back, throws again. He's on target to Darnell Smith. 45-yard line, first down, North Texas. Maka makes the stop. It's a gain of 12. You can see the rhythm now, and now they're jumping the football. They have the capability of going very quickly. Brandon Bird up the middle and to the 49 of UNLV, and maybe North Texas is inspired by the return of their starting quarterback, Derek Thompson. Not voted team captain this year, and that actually might have been a good thing. You know, whenever you're a quarterback, you're a de facto captain anyway. You're the leader of the offense. Everybody's looking to you. You don't need the mantle of captain latched onto your name, and Thompson has thrived with that change. Still a leader on the North Texas team. Yeah, the coaches think just took some of the pressure off of him, and he has excelled. Deep handoff to Bird again, bounces to the near side, looking for room. He's going to be close to another first down before he is pushed back by the pursuit of the UNLV defense. Vea and Hassan combined on the stop. It's a gain of four, and it is enough for the first down. They asked to move the chains. You could see this is something we we're visiting with Tim Howe, defensive coordinator, first year here for UNLV. The number of formations that North Texas uses on offense and in an offensive set that they don't see much in the Mountain West Conference other than maybe San Diego State. Bird again and you know UNLV has done a pretty good job on him keeping him contained. He has dropped for a loss low to Lele making the stop the redshirt freshman from Hawaii maybe the most explosive player on that UNLV defense. It's a loss of three yards. And he's a guy that they're expecting big things from. You know, he's a guy that blow up an offensive play, not always in the right spot. He might be blowing up an aspect of the offense they weren't intending it to. <laughs> but when he does find the football, he makes his presence felt there for a tackle for loss. That sometimes happens with freshmen. Five receiver set, three to the right, two to the left. He comes over the middle to Chancellor off his hand incomplete. And Tani Maka was back from his middle linebacker spot in coverage to help defend that play. So now third down and long for North Texas. And what does the offensive coordinator Mike Canales draw up here? Yeah, that, this, is, this is what they've avoided all season long. As we mentioned earlier, over 80 snaps on third down were for third and eight or more. Now we saw so far in the first quarter when they were able to stay in third less than 10, they're able to convert, but due to penalties, they found themselves in this situation. Tackle for loss, placing him behind the down the distance. A throw complete to the 40-yard line to Darius Terrell, but well short of the first down. And so it'll be fourth down and a long four. Keeping the offense out there for now. And now finally, they're waving the offense off the field and send the punting unit out. You can see special teams coach Tommy Perry consulting with Dan McCarney. Coach McCarney's a defensive minded guy and his defense was just able to get a stop get the ball back to his offense. Yeah the offense stalled but they've done an excellent job. UNLV has not been a threat. Timeout called by North Texas. Timeout. North Texas. 
9.18 to go here, first half. UNLV leads this all time series four games to none. This is the first meeting since 2000. And it's been a good game so far. And for today's AFLAC trivia question, this is what uh, the great minds here, our production team, have come up with. UNLV's starting quarterback back in 1981 was Sam King. Now, who were the backups, the second stringer and the third stringer on the UNLV Rebels depth chart at quarterback 1981? I know that sounds like a tough question, but when you get the answer, understand why we decided to go with this well, yeah I mean so here's a hint you got to think you know, the number two and number three quarterbacks at UNLV 22 years ago <laughs> well, is it, is more than that 30 32 years, 32 years. Yeah. third punt for Masik he's going to try and pin the Rebels deep but this goes a little bit too far for him I'm sure he's a little upset with himself so a touchback we're going to have that trivia answer for you after the break. Ruminate on that for a bit. We'll have it for you. 9.09 to go in the half. And he's Shroff with his Sports Center. You in game, Nebraska and Georgia. TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. Georgia beat Nebraska last year in the Capital One Bowl. Off the punt. Reggie Davis muffs it. Nebraska recovers. And then Tommy Armstrong to Quincy Anunwa. Georgia just added a field goal. It's 7 to 6 now in the second quarter. Clay and Matt, Happy New Year, guys. Hey, Happy New Year to you, too, Anish. And uh, you and I, unfortunately, had to see Aaron Murray go down with that injury against Kentucky late in the year. And now uh, Georgia going with their backup in the bowl game today. Well, you know, ironically, North Texas enjoyed a lot of special teams success versus Georgia. Yeah. We're tied up in the third quarter. Sounds like they're having difficulties versus Nebraska. Play fake. Caleb Herring, UNLV quarterback, moves out of the pocket and throws a strike to Devontae Davis. And he gets a nine yard reception. All right. At UNLV, way back in 1981, Sam King was the starting quarterback. The number two and number three quarterbacks on the depth chart ESPN's Kenny Main, believe it or not. And Hall of Famer Randall Cunningham, soon to be Hall of Famer? Should be. Should be a Hall of oh, Famer. Man. Yeah. Who's the guy you wanted in Tech Mobile? I know that. That's going to be Tim Cornette on the carry for UNLV. And that's a gain of two and a first down. Yeah, the number 12 retired at UNLV. That was Randall Cunningham's number. Uh, the only number, in fact, retired by the Rebels. And Kenny Main, he actually anchored Sports Center last night after that. Great Texas A&M game with Duke. He was behind the desk last night. He's probably watching today. Pass incomplete intended to Marcus Sullivan, so second down and ten. There's Randall Cunningham, and he really redefined the position of quarterback. Well, he was the prototype. You know, look, a big, long guy, physical, could sling the football. He's the only guy, I think, that could actually throw it to Randy Moss, and he'd not have to pull up. And then, of course, Kenny Main. Who we know went on to a, an illustrious career in broadcasting. Tremendous hair. <laughs> and one of the favorites in UNLV lore. Rapier like wit. No question. Tied at seven, second down at ten. Off his back foot. That's Heron incomplete to Cornette. That just didn't look right. Now it's third down at ten. Is it Herring just trying to buy time, trying to set up the screen, but it was sniffed out. Cornette you know, had difficulty now trying to test the middle of this North Texas mean green defense. So mean Joe Green is here today. Going to be pleased with how the defense has stepped up after allowing a 95 yard drive and now a third and 10, an opportunity to get the ball back for the offense. UNLV 3 of 4 on third down. They need the 41 yard line. UNLV's done a good job protecting that. And this time, Cut down at the 21. James Jones on a corner black blitz comes in, and UNLV will have to kick it away. Well, that's something, Clay, that you know you look at, you got to pick a spot because of the mobility of the quarterback, but they love to crash their corners. John Skladani's going to do it from the boundary. James Jones did an excellent job of timing that blitz and ending up at Caleb Herring's feet right as he hit the bottom of his drop. 
and he's able to get the drop. And really the first pressure we've seen I think out of this North Texas defense is something they've done an excellent job of all season long getting to the quarterback. Yunkers punt. Caught at the 33 by Chancellor. Takes it to the far sideline and great pursuit and coverage by UNLV as they have not allowed Chancellor to get loose yet. That's a 46 yard kick. North Texas and UNLV tied at seven here in the heart of Dallas. The Waller Savings Card. Call now. Happy New Year from Dallas, Texas. Welcome back to the heart of Dallas Bowl. I'm Clay Maffick alongside Matt Stinchcomb. Don Davenport down on the sidelines. A good game so far. And this is going to be a great game on Monday. Vizio's BCS National Championship. Seminoles looking to complete their undefeated season and claim their first title since 99. The Tigers trying to finish their remarkable ride. Watch the Vizio BCS National Championship. Monday night. Huh. Noticing and, a theme here. Yeah. To run of SEC titles. Sits at seven. Auburn trying to make it eight. And we know who Don Davenport's going to be rooting for. She's a former Auburn volleyball star. I am. I got to give a big war eagle. Guys, we got to work Auburn twice this year. And I have to admit, it was early in the season. Didn't think that they were going to be a national championship team. But, man, they got better week after week, huh? And we are impressed by your professional integrity by not rooting on the air. <laughs> right. <That's> right. <laughs> it's a once in a lifetime. There's Jimerson. And he is forced back. That's going to be a loss of one. This UNL def UNLV defense has done a pretty good job against Bird and Jimerson. All in all, as Tyler Gaston made the tackle. Well, again, doing a good job taking on a double team. Tyler Gaston, you know, it's not as if he was unaccounted for in the blocking scheme. And he finds himself in the offensive backfield again. And it looks like it resulted in an injury at the end of that rushing attempt. But once again, you look at UNLV finding ways right now to me, the interior portion of their defensive front doing a pretty good job of either penetrating the pocket, we've seen pressure, and then getting tackles for loss and getting North Texas off schedule on offense. Derek Thompson, the starting quarterback, left the game earlier for North Texas with a knee injury, was able to come back. Now, Jimerson is up on his feet and heading to the sideline. Here's a look at the play. You can see he's met by Gaston in the backfield. And, uh, you can see his right knee. You know, he had tried to plant. You see these running backs, they fight for every yard. He had his knee planted, and it looked like Gaston's right knee kind of made it buckle. In the Mean Green's first four drives, the three that resulted in punts, they had a negative yardage play. Well, they just had one here. The one touchdown drive, no yet negative yardage plays. They go back to the air, underthrown to Chancellor. Third down and 11 now. Well, you, know, you got a, a, a quarterback right now. He's got an injury to his knee, a dislocated patella on a previous possession. And that time, Tim Houck decided, I'm going to bring some pressure and I'll take my chances. You see the brace there on Thompson's left knee. They're just trying to keep him propped up. But to your point, Clay, when they get off schedule, and this is reminiscent of a year ago, third and 10 plus, where they've had difficulty, as most teams would, in converting. Thompson on third and 11. They go to their big third down guy, Carlos Harris, but the pass is too tall. And they'll have to punt. Matt Vignal is there on the coverage and out North Texas one of five on third down after an opening offensive possessions they're trading blows back and forth special teams a fortuitous muffed punt by UNLV fortuitous for North Texas anyway for to allow them to get on the board but now both of these defenses seeming to settle in a little bit and forcing some exchanges fourth punt for Mossick Whiteley lets it bounce 
And now he touches it late. Boy, that was a dangerous decision. He was able to hang on to it. Quickly tackled at the 11, but boy, Keith Whiteley, the true freshman from Houston, taking a big chance there for the Rebels. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to see much more of Keith Whiteley returning kicks here today. I'll be shocked. In fact, Bobby Howe, you know, one of the reasons why we haven't seen a lot of of a Shaquille Murray Lawrence, who's a game player, breaker, former running back, is because he had difficulty protecting the football. Nick Sherry, the quarterback that started the season for UNLV, was throwing interceptions early in the season. He's not going to tolerate bad ball security. Turns out to be a 56-yard kick. Backs UNLV up to their own 11. Here comes pressure off the edge, and Herring keeps him right up the middle. Big run for the quarterback. On his feet over the 35 to the 36-yard line. Well, as you pointed out, they brought edge pressure again, James Jones, and what's the middle of the screen? Everyone vacates. They run with the play fake. And you can see Derek Akune, he just left, vacated the middle portion of the defense at the second level, and Caleb Herring, great read to take advantage of the open. Here he goes back to the air. It's nearly picked off and somehow caught by Devontae Davis. Will Wright is kicking himself because he ran, undercut this route, ran right underneath this football. This is number 11's reception. Maybe he was worried he was going to get blown up. He looked like a receiver over the middle and just kind of alligator armed it. Otherwise, that's a that's a sure interception. It ends up tipping it to Devontae Davis. Will Wright has had some big plays this year, including a game-winning INT. Now Herring is going to run for the first down. It's a gain of four. Not to the 43. Check that the 47-yard line. And be first down for the Rebels. Yeah, Will Wright, great senior year for North Texas. Game-winning INT in the win over Ball State, which Dan McCartney says was one of the big signature wins for his club this year. Yeah, that was uh, one of the turning points he felt like for his team and proved to be a good foothold for what came out to be an eight-win season. Good pocket for Herring now. Feeling some heat, steps up and is tripped up from behind. He'll get a couple of yards, but Belazine got him at the shoelaces. Second and eight. Twice now, though, where it seems as if John Skladani, defensive coordinator for North Texas, just gives his front the green light to go ahead and get upfield because you have to always keep in mind when you've got a running quarterback, pass rush lane discipline because you don't want to open up in the middle. That time, Belazine able to get him by the shoelaces. Aaron keeps again. With three more, so it'll be third down at about four. John Skladani is Dan McCartney's defensive coordinator at Iowa State. And now here at North Texas, where he has done a really good job. We talked about it before, how this unit was so bad for so long. And now it's really the strength of this North Texas team. They're going to try and get off the field here on third down. You can see Caleb, this is one of the things that Tim Rosenbaugh said. He's given Caleb Herring the opportunity to change the play. Checks to a pass, complete to Adonis Smith. That's his first touch today, and it's a big one. A first down conversion. A junior from Oakland, California. Once again, you know, former receiver, Caleb Herring, who we asked in the coaches' meetings yesterday, was, was he kind of the Alamo answer for you at quarterback? Because they gave Nick Sherry every opportunity to seize the reins, a younger player, and he's grown into this role with his accuracy and his decision making. Pitch it back to Herring. Now he has a receiver wide open, but he can't connect with Davis. A little flea flicker. But the Rebels come up empty, so second and ten. What a matchup in that instance. Devontae Davis is covered by Zach Orr, middle linebacker by North Texas, and he certainly had a step or two. If that ball is on target, Davis would be able to rein it in and take it in likely because that side of the field had been emptied by the routes. Yard short of 100 passing today for Caleb Herring. Maybe he'll get it here, has to hurry, does connect, 
but then it's dropped at the 15 yard line by Mata Eller. The senior can't bring it in. Laramie Lee was all over. And again, this time Zach Orr was dropping from his middle linebacker position. Laramie Lee is a guy who's done a good job all season of separating receivers from the football with big hits. That time, just disrupting the hands of Mata Ele and resulting in the incompletion. And Mata Ele is now shaken up. And we're going to step aside as they take a look at the senior receiver. Are you in good hands? And a Shroff in studio, an update from the Outback Bowl, LSU and Iowa. The Tigers' Anthony Jennings making his first career start. The true freshman punches it in from two yards out. LSU up 7-0. Coming up at halftime, it's the Bowl Mania version of the Big Ten SEC Challenge. Penn State players react to their head coach leaving for the NFL. Plus, we'll have previews of the Rose Bowl and Fiesta Bowl. All right, and Anish will send it back to you in just over three minutes. UNLV facing a third down and ten. They were able to get Mata L.A. off the field. He walked off under his own power. Ninth play of the drive for the Rebels of UNLV. They got it at the 38-yard line of the Mean Green. We're tied at seven here in the heart of Dallas. Devontae Davis singled up at the top of your screen right now. James Jones. Was Trice in the safety position and position to help over the top. Herring three for four passing on third down throws here can't convert. Sullivan the intended receiver well underthrown. Richard Abbey was all up in Caleb Herring's face. Well, they've had difficulty blocking Richard Abbey all game long. He's done an excellent job of collapsing the pocket, gaining penetration versus the run. And the Mean Green able to get a big stop after exchanging punts. Their offense gets stymied, and now they get yet another opportunity to get a score in. They weren't able to get within Nolan Cohor's field goal range, so now Logan Yunker comes on for his third punt in a row. Trying to pin North Texas deep, and this one is going to get into the end zone. Touchback. North Texas already a four win improvement over 2012. Dan McCartney has done a super job. This is his 21st bowl game as a coach. He's been around the block, knows how to turn programs into winners. We saw him do that at Iowa State. And now he's doing that in Denton, Texas with this mean green program. Ironically, his mentor, Hayden Fry, also coached once upon a time in Denton. Isn't that something? Yeah, you look at how these coaching trees branch out. You see how he's done it, how Dan McCartney has turned things around. Those points allowed steadily decreasing. It's been with defense that's created the margins of victory. Trying to get some points here before halftime and take the lead. That's complete to Harris. Gets away along the sideline. Able to stay in bounds. And finally, hauled down at the 41, but it's a 21-yard pickup. It's stack formation, so a little bit challenging to come up. And that was Matt Vignal coming up from his safety position, trying to make the tackle. Missed open field tackle. Brandon Bird hit at the line of scrimmage. And Bird get maybe a yard. He's only at 17 yards rushing here today. They've kept him bottled up, Clay. Two out of their last three ball games, he rushed for over 200 yards, but interior front doing a good job for UNLV. Darnell Smith bumped in the secondary. The Mean Green fans wanted pass interference, no flags thrown. That's Kenneth Penny. Team high, 16 passes defended for UNLV this year. Now to me, you know, I don't think it was PI, of course. I think what it was is Thompson's thinking back shoulder. He was throwing back behind the receiver. Once again, they just, they've just been a little bit out of sync in their passing game. It's now third and ten. And Texas is one of five today on third down conversions. Pressure off the edge. Thompson gets rid of it. 
Complete to Smith, but he's short of the first down by about five yards. Tim Hassan quickly brought him down to keep him from picking it up. And North Texas unable to get anything going on that series. Well, once again, the tone was set for this series with a zero yardage game play. Brandon Bird on first down, trying to get that interior run game going. Well, Texas hasn't had a lot of success. You know, he's done a good job up the middle of that defense. What yards that has been gained in the run game has been towards the perimeter by North Texas. Marcus Sullivan standing at the 15 yard line, ready to return this punt. And it's going to land at the five, and it rolls into the end zone for a touchback. But you're right, no Keith Whiteley. On that punt return for UNLV, they instead go to the veteran Sullivan. He's unable to make a return as it sails into the end zone. And now Caleb Herring. And the Rebels will come back out with a minute 14 to go here before halftime. This is Herring's day. Well, he started out hot, hitting Devontae Davis for a big hitter on what ended up being a 95-yard touchdown drive. Marcus Sullivan getting in on the act. We've seen him hurt North Texas with his legs on design QB runs. He's done a pretty solid job of running the zone read aspect of their offense. But North Texas has found ways to get stops. Throw it out to the flat. And it's caught by Taylor Barnhill, the fullback. And it's a short gain, second down and eight. UNLV has all of its timeouts remaining. As we're under a minute to go before halftime. Nolan Kohlhorst has a pretty good leg, too. They'll be comfortable with him from inside 50 yards on a field goal attempt. That's a first down catch for Davis. He gets out of bounds at the 31 yard line, stopping the clock with 44 seconds to go. You know, and visiting with the coaches, as you mentioned, they're confident uh, with their field goal kicking capability, something we can't say necessarily for North Texas. Yards to gain, to be sure. Right now, Bobby Houck more than capable with the time remaining, 44 seconds on the clock, and an opportunity to use the entire portion of the field knowing you've got timeouts in your pocket. There's Kohorst. A long of 50 this year. He had a 44-yard game winner against Hawaii this season as one of his highlights. 44 seconds to go, first and 10. They throw it again, and that's nearly picked off. Herring threw it right to James Jones, and he couldn't take it back. So that's Will Wright, and now James Jones, who had sure picked sixes if they could only make the catch. At that time, Anthony Williams was just a little bit late adjusting to that throw. A little like Caleb Herring. I don't know that he was off target right there. I think he was looking to throw a quick stop. At that time, James Jones, or Anthony Williams, rather, just floated a little bit on his route. Play clock inside of five. Herring. To the right, deep downfield, looking for Williams, incomplete. So now third down and 32 seconds to go. He had Anthony Williams. Anthony Williams is open. Caleb Herring escapes the pocket and strings out that play, and you see this all the time, where you end up stressing the secondary. But that ball was thrown behind Williams. If he's able to lead him, it's six. And he's thrown on the run to his right. Just didn't get enough on that football. Who are they looking for here, Devontae Davis? I don't see why you would when you're looking at 32 ticks. Now obviously, it's four down territory. But Devontae Davis, being your big play receiver, even if you get it high, give him a chance to go up and get it. It is Cornette on the run. And he is hammered at the 35-yard line by Akune. And a timeout called by North Texas because they know they've got a great special teams unit that has a, a tendency for blocking kicks. They want some time on the clock. In case they do, they get the ball back here. They want their offense to have a little time to work with. There you yeah. see it, seven block kicks this season, tied for first in the nation. You know, earlier, they had a return or a block set up. They went after the kick. Breland Chancellor was able to field it. Whatever yardage he picked up was on his own. I think they set up the return here versus 
trying to block this one. They came close versus the shield that UNLV employed to try to keep their punter clean. But I think they set up the return. It's nothing exotic that they run. It's middle return, it's sideline return. They're just excellent in executing. Fourth punt for Yunker. Oh. Texas appeared to jump offside. And that might change the complexion of this decision if it doesn't pick up the first. Well, it's going to be a first down for UNLV. Offside. Defense. Number 15. Five yard penalty. Did the Cadence the first get him? He knew right away. Did you see Talotalele slaps him on the back? Hey, thanks for the free yardage. Automatic first, you see Dan McCarney. That's a huge mental lapse right there. You give UNLV yet another crack with 24 seconds. Three timeouts left. Mike Marshall jumps offside. First down and 10 now for UNLV. 24 seconds left. They've got three timeouts remaining. Herring play fix. Steps up in the pocket. Hit. Got rid of it in time. Wide open is Cornette along the sideline. And he gets to the 42-yard line of North Texas to stop the clock with 16 seconds to go. Caleb Herring got punished for this completion, though. Belazine comes in late, drags him down. Herring a little bit slow to get up. Great job of finding Cornette. Good coverage downfield, nowhere to go with the football. Pick up yardage that you can and keep time on the clock. Cornette, heady enough to head towards the sidelines to get the clock stopped. Getting fairly close to Cohorst field goal range, maybe about nine yards short. Herring throws, caught by Davis, trying to get away from a tackle. And he's pulled down near the 35-yard line and a timeout, UNLV, with nine seconds to go. Herring limping just a bit. Caleb Herring looks to me like, you know, that run element, it might not be near the threat that it was earlier in this game if this injury continues to linger. He's only one snap removed from being dragged down from behind by Belazine. But if he proves to be less than mobile, I think North Texas starts to lay his ears back a little bit in the pass rush. They've been a little bit muted in their pressure. Other than a corner shoot where they brought in Jones, John Skladani, I think, has been very conservative getting after the passer. Otherwise, though, if Herring is not going to be that threat, it's Gimpy, might cut him loose, 34 sacks on the season. Right now, it would be a 52-yard field goal attempt for Cohorse. They'd like to pick up about five or six more to get him into more of his comfort zone. Second down at three, Herring. Five seconds to go, throws, and that's incomplete. Clock stops, three seconds on the clock. So do they bring out the field goal unit here? Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a little bit shocked that they didn't try to pick up yardage rather than go for the end zone. Just enough yardage, to your point, to get the cohorts comfort zone. You know, we talked to him yesterday, he said 50 yards. We're good with 50 yards. Well, as you pointed out, it's 52 yards. Close is not enough. A little bit surprising you know, with the timeout that they didn't try to pick up the yardage needed and call a good timeout and get the unit out. So here's Nolan Cohorst. UNLV's all-time leading scorer from 52, and it's blocked! Blocked again by North Texas, their eighth block of the year. But North Texas called a timeout before the kick, and the timeout is going to be granted, so it actually backfires on the mean green. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, Sometimes coaches, and coaches do this, you want to ice the kicker. And so you let them get almost to the point where they're going to snap the football. And you see Coach McCarney, he's saying, look, yeah, I want to get in this kid's head a little bit. Let's let him think about it. 
And doggone if that unit once again, North Texas and special teams is able to get a big block. Still the yardage is the same. But otherwise, you know, you get a second crack at this one. And McCartney is going to regret that if he happens to knock this one through. The confusion there. Caleb Herring had to get up there and realign the blockers on the unit. Field goal protection. Three seconds on the play clock. They get it off. Here's the kick. It's on the way. And no good. So Cole Horst can't deliver three for UNLV ahead of the gun here at halftime. And it's a 7-7 tie going into the locker rooms. Proved to be interesting early, of course. Special teams has figured to be a big factor in this ballgame. Let's go down to Don. All right, Coach McCartney, two big stands for your defense there. Worked out well for you right before the half. How would you assess their performance? Well, you know, I mean, we've got two opportunities to catch balls on defense, and we're probably going to score. we got to start making plays when we get opportunities. But UNLV is a good football team. They're scoring 31 points a game. we got to come out and execute. We have to execute the calls and execute on offense. But this is a dogfight like we knew it would be. You talk about executing that offense. What does that mean? That means good protection. That means better routes. We had a couple guys a little off on their routes, and then execute. Throw the football. Do it with timing. Do it with class. Do it within the calls and make plays and go score points. All right, Coach. Appreciate the time. UNLV 7, North Texas 7 in the 2014 Heart of Dallas Bowl. We now send it to the Sports Center U halftime report with Anish Roth. All right, thank you, Clay. I'm here with former Georgia quarterback David Green. One of the questions in this Heart of Dallas Bowl would be, could UNLV slow the North Texas rushing attack? UNLV 110th in the nation against the run. Only held North Texas to 50 yards on the ground in the first half. In case you missed any of the first half, Caleb Herring, Marcus Sullivan, 7-0 run in Rebels. And North Texas, uh, they couldn't get their big running back going but Antoine Jimerson punches it in from a yard out absolutely how about the start UNLV going 95 yards first series of the game but as you can see I think the story is UNLV's defense I mean they've been giving up 222 yards on the ground per game North Texas been has great uh, running game as well but they have been shut out this first half like you said only giving up 50 yards mean green need more from Brandon Bird a thousand yard rusher nine carries 17 yards in the first 30 minutes Nebraska taking on Georgia in the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. One of the most decorated passers in SEC history, Aaron Murray. He's a spectator out with a torn ACL. Todd Gurley is a participant on fourth and one. Wants the effort, stretches for the first down, knows where the marker is. I tell you, he's a special player. He's one of those guys that when he's in the game, Georgia, you know you always got a chance to win. That would lead to a dog's field goal. Three Georgia field goals in the first half, but here Reggie Davis muffs the punt. Nebraska recovers, and that would lead to this. Tommy Armstrong Jr. to Quincy Anunwa. Five-yard touchdown. Anunwa ties the school record with his 11th TD grab of the season. Nebraska on top 10-9 at the half. Hudson Mason getting the start for Georgia. What have you seen from him in the first half? Well, you can tell the elements are playing a big part in this game. I mean, they, they haven't been able to stretch the field. The big passes have come to Artie Lynch and obviously to Todd Gurley in the backfield as well. So I would continue to look for screens, look for Artie Lynch to get the ball. But Hudson Mason, they need to find a way to get some big plays in the second half. A developing story as first reported by ESPN's Adam Schefter and Chris Mortensen. Penn State's Bill O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome back to the Heart of Dallas Bowl, presented by Plains Capital Bank. Happy New Year to all. We're tied at seven going to the second half. 
Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Mathic, Don Davenport down on the field. We hope you're enjoying day one of 2014. Stinch has vowed not to shave at all in 2014. <laughs> That's right. I want to be an honorary Robertson. Yeah. I want to learn how to build duck calls. <laughs> Both of these teams averaging about 32 points per game, but it's defense that's been the story so far. A little bit surprising in some ways. Maybe it shouldn't be because UNLV finished the season playing very good versus the run. San Diego State and the Mountain West Conference is a physical run team, but so far, UNLV playing versus North Texas the way they did versus the Aztecs to close out the regular season. And it's been the defensive front has really asserted itself, I think led largely by Tyler Gasson. And this is something that Tim Howe mentioned was important in that they play well. Now for North Texas, they've had their opportunities, but because of penalties in some instances, this long run negated by a chop block, uh, what would have been a sure interception by Will Wright, incapable of bringing that down. And then Jones, who could have taken it the other way, that's a likely pick six. But we've seen this team for North Texas do an excellent job generating turnovers and may have more opportunity in the second half. Scion first half stats and the run game as you can see for both teams almost non-existent. Yeah, and it's not as surprising I think that UNLV might have had more difficulty because North Texas has had such a good year defensively. But the Rebels really outside of San Diego State, it's really kind of hard to point to an area where they would have had success in run defense and yet they've done an excellent job through two quarters. Don had a chance to talk with Coach Houck. Well, Clay, you know this North Texas defense has been so good in the second half, giving up, I think, just over six points in the second half. Coach Hawk knows that. He said he's not happy with this team as far as penalties, mistakes, turnovers. He said he thinks they've knocked the rust off. They should be good to go here in the second half. You know, this week he told us they want to play fast. Not happy with the tempo he's seen out of his team so far offensively in the first half. So you might see them go just a bit faster here coming up in the third quarter. Well, they're going to start from the 20, Don, as Keith Whiteley He's back in the return game, this time on a kickoff return. That's where UNLV will go to work, and we'll see if UNLV can figure out this North Texas defense. I'll tell you what, Wiley got knocked back into 2013 by Marcus <laughs> Trice. That was a shot. First drive, 95 yards and a touchdown. Since, just 97 yards altogether. You keep an eye on Caleb Herring as well. He was banged up a little bit, limping significantly at the end of the first half. And this one is going to be blown dead before it starts. It's going to be a false start on UNLV. False start. Offense, number 81, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. First penalty on the Rebels today. They are the least penalized team in the Mountain West Conference. They average just four per game. They have been clean up till that one. We've seen injuries. We've seen a lot of penalties in this game as well in the first half. You know, something to point out, though, too, the layoff. You get a lot of practice in. You don't play games. There's not usually officials there. So not surprising these teams are a little bit rusty in that regard. Inside handoff here to Cornett. Derek Akune here to wrap him up. Conference USA honorable mention this year from his outside linebacker spot. Number seven makes the stop. That's uh, no gain, so... Second down and long. And this is what Don was talking about, how the North Texas defense gets better and better as games go on. There's six and a half points in the second half. That wouldn't be enough to win this ball game, of course, as long as uh, North Texas continues to enjoy success offensively. And you've seen it. This is where they kind of squeeze the life out of their opposition. Do an excellent job with halftime adjustments. Pairing complete. Back to the original line of scrimmage. But then Kenny Byers and Will Wright combine on the stop. So third down and long. And just to get back to the original line of scrimmage, you know, both of these offenses not very tolerant of negative yardage plays. We saw that. That was really the harbinger of bad things for North Texas in the first half. And now UNLV difficulty just getting back to a 10 yardage needed to gain for the first down. It's a bold game, but it feels like a North Texas home game. Good crowd here in support of the Mean Green. That's complete. Herring finds the receiver. Devontae Davis for a first down out to the 35-yard line. Herring going to his go-to guy for a pickup of 13. Once again, it looks to me like Caleb Herring 
I don't know that he's got any problems as far as mobility is concerned, keeping that play alive, but a big collision at the end of that play between the two safeties. And Davis is still down. I don't know that. Oof. I tell you what, I, I, I think it's probably Laramie Lee. That's incomplete. He bounces right back up, but he led with he led with the crown of his helmet. And he ends up hitting Marcus Trice, his teammate, as he was tackling Devontae Davis. You know, that's the play, Clay. That that is the play that they want to try to avoid. Now you see Larry Mealy, he bounces right back up. And I'm a little surprised, actually, that, that Davis is the one that's shaken up unless Lee's knee or something hit his helmet, which I didn't notice initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's up now. And he appears to be all right. He's got eight catches now for 83 yards. Yeah. And that was a big first down for UNLV because that drive appeared to be going nowhere. Big conversion. Absolutely it was. When you look at it, and again, Caleb Herring's escape ability, ability to keep a play alive, move the pocket, and it always is going to stress a North Texas secondary that's performed admirably throughout this season. But with a talent like Davis, and the ability to have a quarterback buy some time and improvise, that's a dangerous recipe for any defense. He's down at 10 for the Rebels. Opening series of the second half, it's a run play for Cornette again. And again, the running games for both teams really not finding a lot of traction. A gain of one for Cornette. Zach Orr makes the tackle. Zach Orr is a guy with the North Texas coaching staff and the film that you watch of North Texas indicates you know, he, he might be able to make the leap to the NFL. You know, he's a guy that could make an NFL roster if a team gives him a shot. He had 114 tackles during the year, 11 for loss. Herring takes the handoff, rolls out to the near side and is crumpled at the 27 by Belazine and the aforementioned Zach Orr. Right on cue, the guys, all he does is just make plays. He roams sideline to sideline. This time, though, really made happen by Belazine. Belazine stayed at home, maintained containment. You could see when Herring came out of his play fake, he was already faced with an upfield Aaron Belazine, and Zach Orr was there to help clean up. Second sack of the game. Now it's third and 17 for the Rebels. Short pass to Davis along the sideline. Get him to the 34, but punting unit comes out for UNLV as we go down to dawn. You know, you guys were talking about Zach Orr, his father, Terry Orr, in the stands, played right here on this field 30 years ago. And I got a chance to talk to him a little bit. He talked about the memories on this field. Of course, you don't want to talk about that game because his Texas team lost to Georgia that game. But he does remember scoring the game-winning touchdown against Alabama here, right here on this field. And he said it's really something special to be here, to watch his kid play in the same stadium that he played in. And he said they need more games here. Oh, and by the way, it looks exactly the same. Man, it hasn't changed much. The historic Cotton Bowl, now two generations of the Oars have played here. Somehow, that stayed in bounds. And it's going to be at the 40. Here's a look at Zach Orr in action. Again, you see Belazine bringing up Herring. Herring's having to make moves, and Zach Orr was closing in quickly. Two plays in a row. Terry Orr's boy comes up with big plays for the Mean Green defense. A defense that has really clamped down on UNLV offensively. Yeah. After that 95-yard drive, it appeared as if the speed of UNLV was going to be able to overwhelm North Texas. Not the case. North Texas's defense, ninth in the country in scoring defense at 18 points per game. They've held UNLV to seven so far. Now the mean green offense taking a shot deep. Chancellor along the sideline incomplete. Defended well by Penny. Kenny Penny. <laughs> In coverage and it's second down. I'm gonna go with Kenneth Penny, just to <laughs> differentiate. <laughs> Kenneth Penny did a great job. It was a double move by Breland Chancellor, and on first down, that's one of those first down shots. You could see that all-purpose yardage that Chancellor was able to put up this year. You can get the football in his hands. He is a weapon for North Texas. At that time, Kenny Penny did a great job in coverage and staying home. Stepped in for an injured Sidney Hodge when he went down at the corner position. Thompson 
got rid of it to Chancellor, still on his feet. Now a host of Rebels come in to bring him down. Breland Chancellor flashed, made the catch. Now a penalty flag comes in as the officials come over to sort through the mob over there, pushing and shoving. You know, in the first half, we saw Mason Wybarbo come flying in as he covered down. A lot of offensive linemen are told to do that. You follow the play as quickly as you can in case the ball comes out. I think they're going to get him this time for diving into this pile. After the play, personal foul, late hit, offense, number 57, 15 yard penalty, the down counts, third down. You're right, it was Y Barbo. You could say they're explaining it to Dan McCartney because he's one of their favorites. They call him the Badger, and you see he's just coming in there. I got to tell you, man, unless the whistle, which you can't hear during the replay, the Chancellor's still up. They're still trying to rake the football out, but once you hear that whistle, you can't go diving into the pile. I'm sure that's why what led to that call, and of course, compromises your offense's ability to try to convert. And yet again, a third and long. Both of these offenses incapable of staying ahead in the chains. We saw it in North Texas's first series today how penalties really crippled them. And that's the way this one's going here. Third down and a long way to go for a first down. They complete the pass at the 39, and then slipping free is Chancellor, and I think they got it. To the 49 of UNLV, a first down for Chancellor. Great play after the catch. What a great recipe is, third and 10 plus. Find number three, and you can see confusion in coverage. Bea unable to come down from his safety position quickly enough. And the Chancellor, who does an excellent job of breaking tackles in the open field, able to get upfield and get the yardage needed. And around it, it's Chancellor again. This time hit in the backfield. Turns it into something positive anyway. It's a pickup of three this time for Chancellor. He is slippery. Not very big, 5'9", 186, as you talked about. And that, that actually is a, is a benefit for him. This is that size to stay away from guys. And he's got some snaky hips. <laughs> he's, hard, he's a hard guy to square up. There's not much there. And what you see of him is not there for very long. And you see Mike Horsey came up from his safety position, had a clean shot at him, just couldn't get him down to the ground. Rarely does the first tackler get Breland Chancellor down. No scoring in this game since the first quarter. Oh, that's incomplete. Coming across is Darius Terrell. And now it's third down and seven. Thompson took another shot. So again, the pressure getting to North Texas a couple of times, not in time for it to be a sack. But these shots, that time it was Tim Hassan. They start to accumulate a little bit in the quarterback's mind and in his body, for that matter. They don't show up in the stat page other than maybe a QB hurry. But those have just as much of a cumulative effect in the back of their mind as a sack would. 37. Three downs have been difficult today for North Texas as a timeout is called by the Mean Green. Timeout for Texas, and their first. Third downs have been a real strength for this team throughout the year for Dan McCartney, but today they've they've struggled. They're gonna talk about it here as they face a third and seven. 9.14 to go in the third quarter. We're tied at seven in the heart of Dallas Bowl. As hard as it is to believe, this is the 25th anniversary Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Back here in Dallas, and a reminder, a great one between Clemson and Ohio State on tap in the Discover Orange Bowl. Friday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN, also available on the Watch ESPN app. You have two great quarterbacks, Taj Boyd for Clemson, Braxton Miller for Ohio State. Kind of a consolation game for the Buckeyes. They were hoping to be in that national title game on Monday night. It's not going to happen. They have to settle for the Discover Orange Bowl, but that should be fun to watch. Clemson Tigers as well. You know, a lot of people felt like they should have been the contender out of the ACC for the national title game. 
Third down and seven out of the North Texas timeout. They've already converted a big third down on this drive, trying to do it again. Pressure. Thompson, complete. Caught at the 25. And down at the 20 is the tight end, Marcus Smith. And Thompson is still down on the turf. Helped to his feet, but he converts a big third down pass. Once again, the blitz getting home. No one to account for Maka. Comes right in Derek Thompson's face and his view. You see 41, and look at Thompson standing and delivering on a bad knee as a senior. He recognizes what a huge opportunity this is, not only for him and his career, but also this program and able to hit Smith for a big game. Showing a lot of moxie today, the senior from Glen Rose, Texas. Play action pass, looking downfield, now rolling out, throws on the run through the hands of Smith again. Marcus Smith, who caught that first down just moments ago, can't bring that one in. So second down and 10. But Thompson today has really given this team an inspirational lift. The way he has played, the way he's been taking some hits, and he's still out there leading this offense. And the last touchdown drive that we saw in this game, Derek Thompson was incapable of completing it. He had to come out with apparent patella dislocation. They haven't been able to run the football well throughout this ballgame, has North Texas, and typically in this portion of the field, in the red zone, they're looking to run it. Antoine Jimerson checks in. Thompson fakes the handoff to him, keeps it, he'll pick up two. So now third and fairly long. That's a, a unique choice, a surprising choice, actually, given that Thompson's taken some shots already here in the second half. He's got the bad knee. The zone read, nobody really crashed on Jimerson. Brandon Bird has been very quiet throughout this game, which changes North Texas's red zone philosophy. Dan McCarney's, you know, he's a defensive-minded coach. He doesn't want to risk turnovers. He likes to run the football. They've been very efficient in this portion of the field, but that's with the ground game that's been non-existent for North Texas. There goes Breland Chancellor in motion. On third down and eight, Thompson, quick strike to Terrell, and it looks like he got it. Boy, Derek Thompson, three times on this series, through the air, converts on third down. Clutch is a good way, I think, to describe Derek Thompson's performance in this ball game. Not only toughness, but in this series specifically, converting the third long third down opportunity. And UNLV have a difficulty getting the right personnel on the field. Tenth play of the drive, and it's Chancellor who takes the direct snap. Nowhere to go. No gain for North Texas. So second down and goal to go. CUA Vaasau got in there to make the tackle. You can see North Texas just trying to get something going in the ground game with Chancellor at the Wildcat position. See the meaningfulness of running the football effectively in their wins and losses this year. Thompson again keeps it. Now third down and goal. Surprised by that call a second time? Yeah, going back to it again. You know, not dissimilar results, really, but of course, look, I'm sure Mike Canales is like, if this kid's willing to gut it out, he's got only a little bit more than a quarter plus, a quarter and a half in his football career. If he's willing to gut it out, then I am too. And keeping it on the ground, and you can see in a big package. Now the receivers spread out. Third and goal. It's Chancellor in motion again. Now they're going to throw. Thompson coming all the way back across the field, and it's a touchdown. Wide open was Drew Miller, the tight end. His second touchdown of the year. And North Texas, for the first time today, has the lead. What you'll see is it's just a delayed release by Drew Miller. He hung in there as if he were blocking. And Thompson 
just drew the defense all the way to the opposite side of the field. And there's nobody there for Drew Miller, who started out in the offensive backfield before he motioned to the end line. Great play call. 14 to 7, Mean Green. In the red zone, North Texas this year, they've been known for running it in. This time they go through the air to Drew Miller. North Texas and Dan McCartney on top. Ladies and gentlemen, $50 savings card. Call now. There's Drew Miller with his second touchdown catch of the year, putting North Texas on top for the first time today, 14 to 7. Great nifty play, too. You'll see Miller, he's right here at the end of the line. And he's going to stay in and block initially. And it's easy to get lost in the wash. You see him kind of pin, he lingers, and then releases. And the entire defense just is pulled towards the quarterback rolling. And Thompson was patient enough and was afforded the time, incidentally. Nobody really forced the throw and came up because you're in a run pass type of situation when a quarterback rolls out. And North Texas and the Mean Green Faithful are feeling it now, knowing that, look, you, you talked about it coming out of half play. This defense does not allow a lot of points in the second half. 6.5. No. And as it is right now, they got the needed score. Zach Owen kicking off, and it's a short kick running up, fielding it at the 15 is Marcus Sullivan. The short return just across the 25 yard line. And we're going to go to the studio with an update in East Rock. All right, thank you, Clay. Well, we get an update from Wisconsin and South Carolina, the Capital One Bowl. Connor Shaw threw a touchdown pass to Bruce Ellington earlier in the game. Ellington returns the favor. First career catch for Shaw. South Carolina missed the extra point. Wisconsin has scored to take the lead. All right, thanks, Anish. Texas 14, UNLV 7, 6.02 to go third quarter here at the heart of Dallas. UNLV gives it to Tim Cornette. He'll take it ahead for about four yards before Orr makes the tackle. UNLV in its first drive of the second half. Six plays, 11 yards, and a punt. Now, Caleb Herring has been dynamic at times here today. He's trying to get this offense going again. Now down for the first time today. Gives it to Cornette, looking for room, can't cut the corner, and he is knocked down at the 31 by Jones, who's having a really good day at corner for North Texas. No game. We'll see Jones that shoots in there. Once again, a great open field tackle by North Texas in space. Let's go down to Don. Yeah, this Mean Green defense feeding off of their offense. Just heard Marcus Trice, their senior leader, on the sideline. He said, do I need to set up a turnover station? Let's go, guys. That's what <laughs> Coach McCartney does every day in practice. Most guys hate it. Marcus Trice loves it. He is the transfer from Oklahoma, having a great season for North Texas. Now Herring, flush from the pocket, looking for help downfield. No, that's batted down incomplete. Fourth down, Richard Abbey was in hot pursuit, and the Rebels will have to punt. John Scodani said that he'd use a defensive lineman at times to spy Caleb Herring. And Herring, that time, you know, he's looking to deliver the football downfield. It was a nice tip, and Richard Abbey is having a whale of a game. He's done a great job penetrating in that time, containing the quarterback. Breland Chancellor backing off. Fields it at the 14, puts on the brakes, now starts his return, gets to the 25. 54-yard punt. North Texas has it when we come back with 4.40 to go here in the third quarter at the heart of Dallas Bowl. Feeling cool and clean, the best that you've ever... The Discover Orange Bowl, Clemson, Ohio State, Friday on ESPN. I think I pulled that out of the mothballs because they were once upon a time known as the Eagles, now the Mean Green. Is he a Randall Cunningham fan or is he a North <laughs> Texas fan? He's a North Texas fan. Here's Derek Thompson's day, and that last drive was very impressive. This was earlier in the game when he got hurt, and North Texas fans were afraid that he was done for the day. Not so. Despite the knee injury, comes back in. And 
He's got his team on top here in the bowl game. Well, you look at it, it was clutch performance on third down conversions of third and 16, third and seven, third and eight, third and seven. They convert all of them, and they did it all passing with the arm of Derek Thompson. A gutty performance, pretty impressive performance, especially on that last drive. 68 yards on that last drive. It was a 12-play scoring drive. He throws on first down here, and it's right on the screws to the 39 to Darnell Smith. 14-yard pickup, and Thompson and this offense now starting to lather up a little bit. Yeah, and, and I wonder if they're going to start standing on the gas. You see him back over the ball quickly, looking to snap the ball. Another quick strike. Chancellor, man, when he gets loose, look out. To the 45-yard line, just like that, of UNLV. Another 16-yard gain. That's something that North Texas can do in challenging UNLV. They haven't had much success throwing the ball deep, winning on double moves, using the aggressiveness of the Rebels secondary against themselves, but because Chancellor is such a good open field runner, breaking tackles. Three receivers to the right, but Thompson went to the tight end left. And Drew Miller with another nice gain for North Texas. Give him nine on that one. And right now, Clay, it seems as if UNLV very much on their heels, and regardless of the fact they've done a great job versus North Texas's ground game, but they're very much in rhythm passing the football, something that wasn't the case for the Mean Green in the first half. Second down and a long one. End around. That's Carlos Harris. And they get it inside the 30 to the 29. Harris picks up six. And you're right, uh, UNLV, you can see the defenders are kind of looking around at one another, trying to figure out an answer here. Yeah, a lot, not much urgency. You can see North Texas are just flopping the formation back and forth, running plays quickly. Brandon Bird, patient, waited for an opening. And, off goes and it's a good run of about five yards. Second down as Vignal made the tackle. You see, we're just Vignol over three minutes to go here in the third quarter. North Texas leading 14 to 7 and have taken it to the 25 of UNLV. What is considered the most important game for both of these programs, maybe in their histories. Thompson dives down close to the 20 yard line, a gain of four. Third down and manageable for North Texas. Be a bad omen if this were the first half, Clay. They were only one of six. But so far, 100% here in the second half. And we've mentioned this has been an excellent third and short football team. But that's also because they've done a lot of success running the football. Really, that five yard game by Bird, the only one I can speak of in this half. Thompson's going to go for it himself. And he's got the first down. Another gutty play by Derek Thompson. You know he's probably tired of taking licks by now. But they call his number, and he obliges with a first down. Lead blocker ended up being Brandon Bird. Ooh, he he's dropped lucky it. lucky to get that football back. That ball, and it came out because he collided with Bird, who was getting pushed backwards. He's lucky to maintain possession, but right now he's their best threat running the football. Marcus Smith was able to get in there and recover that fumble by Thompson. Chancellor. He has been good out of the backfield when called upon today. Maka makes the tackle. He gets to the 11-yard line, a gain of seven. Your point, Clay. You see Bobby Houck trying to fire up his defense, knowing that they have to bow their neck. This is another chance for them. You know, right now, it seems as if the ground game is starting to gain a little bit of steam. To your point, Breland Chancellor has lined up in the backfield a couple of times and has enjoyed success as a ball carrier. Oh. Under center now is Thompson. Fakes a handoff and now turns looking for Carlos Harris, and that lands incomplete. It's going to be third down and three for North Texas. They are five for five on third down so far this half after going one for six in the first half. 
And they have exploded offensively in some ways. You know, it was kind of quiet, smoldering around both offenses for that matter, exchanging punts you know, through the middle portion of this game. And now North Texas, North Texas, they're starting to wear down this Rebel defense. You can see the yardage starting to pile up. Drive started at North Texas's 26-yard line. Brandon Bird. It's going to be close to a first down. Did that second effort get it for him? It looks like it did. Brandon Bird just willing his way ahead, and he got the first down. First and goal for the Mean Green. Some hard won yards by Brandon Bird. He was just shy of a thousand yards. They forced him to get it in the regular season. Again, Tyler Gaston just waiting for him. Bird with the spin move to get past the line of scrimmage, and then the second effort to get the yardage needed to pick up the first. 11 carries, just 25 yards today for Bird, well under his average for the year, but that was an important first down for the senior running back. And he'll carry it again, gets away from a tackler, and lunges inside the five-yard line down at the three. 16 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Disjointed effort by the offensive front that time. Looked like the left side got off earlier than the right side, and Mark Garrick was able to penetrate and again bird making moves in his own backfield having to work to get up to the line of scrimmage Dan McCartney coaching in his 21st bowl game he knows how important this one is to the mean green they're trying to take a two touchdown lead they've got it on the doorstep when we come back to start the fourth here in Big D Bob Stoop Sooners aim to defeat two-time defending national champs, the Crimson Tide in New Orleans, the All-State Sugar Bowl, number 11, Oklahoma, number three, Alabama. Thursday coverage begins at 8 on ESPN. Alabama, everyone pretty much thought that was a cinch that they were going to be in the national title game until Auburn came along. The field goal kicking unit for Alabama thought it was, too. Yeah, right. Play for overtime here if this thing didn't go in. Happy New Year, everybody. It's 14 to 7. North Texas with the lead, and they've got it. Second down and goal inside the UNLV five. Twelfth play of the drive. They've got a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown today. They send Chancellor in motion. It is Chancellor touchdown. That is huge. The boom from the cannon or the touchdown play? Both. Both of these teams looking to fire some armament at one another. Cannons all over the place in here. They went with a jumbo package, three tight ends, and they blow Chancellor through the backfield. You could see him there. It's just a fly sweep. Nobody had the speed to race Chancellor all the way to the pylon, and the Mean Green find themselves in the end zone again. Zach Paul with the extra point. And it's 21 to 7. 12 plays, 74 yards in 4 minutes, 44 seconds. That UNL defense really struggled. And Chancellor takes it in. His first touchdown of the day. And now that North Texas defense, which has been so good in second halves this year, particularly fourth quarters, can now really dig in and try and protect this thing and close it out. We asked the coaching staff at North Texas, why is that? How is it you're so much better in the second half? And they mentioned it's the rotation that they employ in their defensive front. They keep their guys fresh. They feel like they got a great strength and conditioning program. And so they finish games strong. We got three good quarters, but the fourth is usually the most important in competitive games. And this is where the Mean Green close teams out. And with a two touchdown lead, it's a great opportunity to demonstrate how good this defense has been all season long. UNLV has been floundering offensively for most of this ball game, other than really the opening series. First bowl game for North Texas since 04, and you can feel it in this stadium. A lot of mean green fans here, obviously. They're starting to sense it. Wow. Zach Olin almost kicked that into Oklahoma. Let's go to the studio for an update with Anish. 
history made at the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. Nebraska and Georgia. Nebraska from its own one-yard line. Quincy Anunwa is going to bring this one in and go 99 yards. It's the longest pass play in bowl history. Anunwa sets a school record with his 12th touchdown reception. Nebraska up five, fourth quarter. is going to bring this one in and go 99 yards. It's the longest pass play in bowl history. Anunwa sets a school record with his 12th touchdown reception. Nebraska up five, fourth quarter. 99 yarder. The special teams getting Georgia. They had a 90 yard, nine yard kickoff return versus North Texas when they played him earlier. Herring, he has really been running for his life the last couple of series. Brandon McCoy, the Sarge, comes in for the sack. You can see this time he just earns this sack. Brandon McCoy, the guy who had to fight and scrap to get to be eligible to even play college football in his second season, North Texas, final year. And they love his leadership. Iraqi war vet, five years of active duty in the Army. 28 years old, big play there. Now incomplete to the near sideline intended for Devontae Davis. Kenny Byers in on the coverage. So it'll be third down and long for UNLV, which had a beautiful 95-yard opening drive in the game today. But since, the six drives have accounted for just 117 yards. Yeah, it's just, it's remarkable what this defense has been able to do because that first offensive possession for UNLV, they went right down the football field. Tim Cornette running the football to the edges, getting Devontae Davis and Marcus Sullivan in, and then it's been quiet, whisper quiet offensively for UNLV since. They need the 35-yard line, and I think they got it. Now they're going to give the catch to Sullivan at the 35, and that's exactly where he needed to go to move the chains. First down, UNLV. You could see why Bobby Howe, head coach for the Rebels, had some consternation about the pacing of their offense. That was something that kind of stood out as well. They never were really able to get in sync and start pacing the football, running plays quickly. They still really haven't been able to. After the 15-yard gain, Heron chased again and dropped. Sacked for the second time on this series, the fourth today. This time, it's Aaron Belazine who led the league with seven and a half sacks. Well, he's got his first today. You know, I've mentioned his name several times. Not Belazine's, Richard Abbey. Richard Abbey we got upfield so quickly that it opened up that rush lane. Uh, Cornette is down. Training staff quickly out to check on him. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Hey, North Texans fans, very excited around me because I'm standing with the legend Hall of Famer. Mean Joe Green played your college ball at North Texas. Coach McCarney actually had you back in to talk to the team this season. What did you say to them? Well, I told them that uh, over the years I like to brag on North Texas and I wanted to see some mean back in the green. It looks like they're doing it. How about this defense performance today? 
Oh, I am so excited to watch them. Uh, I can brag to all of my friends about North Texas and the Mean Green. Uh, today is, a, is a, just a wonderful day in the history of North Texas football. You, you look at this game, first bowl game since 2004. What does it mean for you for being such a big alum in this school? Oh, it's, uh, it means an awful lot. Uh, as I said, it, we all want to be able to brag about our school. And, you know, I can brag about North Texas in many ways, but I'm, I'm a football player. And I want to brag about uh, my uh, my football team. I, I got guys that, you know, Franco Harris is a big friend of mine, but he's always talking to me about the Nindy Lions, and now I can talk to him a little bit about North Texas. That's right. You got some bragging rights. Well, these fans chanting his name down here, guys, he is a legend. Very happy with what he's seeing out of his mean green defense. They put the mean back in that mean green. All right, done. Thanks to Joe, too. Makes you want to have a Coke, doesn't it? <laughs> Crossing route on second and 15. That's Sullivan again. Pickup of six. Mean Joe Green, of course, went on to a great career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, and Dan McCartney is indebted to him for coming in and really giving an emotional lift to this team before the year started. Well, one of the biggest understatements I've heard all week is for Joe Green to say, I'm a football player. Now, that guy wasn't just a football player. He was an unbelievable football player. And he's a pillar to this North Texas program. Third and ten. Herring already sacked twice. Nearly got him again. Belazine was honing in, but Herring able to get away and throw it incomplete. Well, right now, it's green light rushes for North Texas. In this instance, Herring was just stepping up into the pocket. Belazine with the awareness to collapse back in. He's another one of these players that Joe Scladani, the defensive coordinator, said it's like the light went on. All of a sudden, he decided, I just want to be a really good football player and have a heck of a year. This is the sixth punt today for Yunker. Fair catch at the 25-yard line. North Texas will have it with a two-touchdown lead and 12 and a half to go here in Dallas. You've made unprecedented sacrifices for us. Take on Bob Stoops Sooners in the Big Easy. The All-State Sugar Bowl. Oklahoma, Alabama. Coverage begins Thursday at 8 on ESPN. Two programs making their BCS debuts. Central Florida. The year for the Knights. And number six, Baylor, the nation's leading offense. My quarterback Bryce Petty should be good. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, 8.30 Eastern tonight on ESPN. Unranked in the AP preseason poll, but reached a BCS Bowl. There you see Central Florida, Baylor, Michigan State, and Auburn. That's um, that really is unbelievable. That just proves those polls don't mean anything in August. Give us something to talk about. Eh. Here's Bird. Brandon Bird carries for North Texas. No gain, but... We're probably going to see a steady diet of Bird and Jimerson here for North Texas. They've got a two touchdown lead in the fourth quarter. I'm convinced that Tyler Gaston has not been blocked almost the entire game. I mean, it seems to me as if he's either making plays or he's in a position to make a play. He's had a good game for UNLV that continues to do a good job to stymie any interior runs. It's Bird again, straight up the middle. Stopped at the 29 yard line, third down at about six coming up you look over to the sideline there and Mark May. there's Mark May that's a NASCAR that's Taco? how they get the plays in <laughs> so, so what does say well know what oh and then coach Holtz gets to participate <laughs> as well a lot of schools doing that now Mark May's an old lineman maybe they're just going to run the football that's the one that counts no they're throwing it of course <laughs> you're wrong and it's Chancellor for a first down Caught it at the 35, spun ahead and away from a tackler, gets out to the 38-yard line. You know, he comes all the way across the formation and finds a soft spot in that zone. And once again, the first tackler, incapable of bringing Chancellor down, is just a glancing blow by Maka. But he gets upfield so well, I'd be surprised if we don't find number three on a roster on Sundays next season. He's got six catches for 74. Also has run for over 30 yards, so over 100 yards total offense. And it's Bird again to the outside this time. 
Breland Chancellor is cramping a little bit on the North Texas sideline. It's it's hardly hot here today. It's a pleasant day, but keep those fluids in you. And that six-week layoff or so, that, that doesn't help much. You guys get a little out of shape. Christmas turkey. I didn't push the fluids properly. New Year's last night. You did, though. No, I did, yeah. I, I, I'm more than you, hydrated. You're Which in much better shape than when I last <laughs> saw you. <laughs> better shape than Breland Chancellor. I think not. <laughs> Second and three. Antoine Jimerson started left, goes back right, and he was one step away from maybe breaking loose. It's going to be a loss of one as Mike Horsey, the free safety, made the tackle for UNLV. This, this is Jimmy time, they call it. This is Jimerson time. Everybody's pulling to the left, two pulling blockers to the left. The point of attack was to the left of the offensive front. But as they call it, Antoine Jimerson goes into Jimmy mode and just does whatever he wants. The Jimmy show, I think Canales called it. And he's broken big runs doing that, incidentally. They recognize that that's what they get when he's in the ball game. No jitterbug just about anywhere. Seven for seven on third down in the half. And they do it again. Carlos Harris, he is their third down receiver. He makes the catch near midfield. First down, Mean Green. You know, that's got to be the story, the overarching story of this game is North Texas's ability to interpret these signs to get the plays in. What in the world they're conveying, we have no idea. Monster Trucks, Chili Dogs, and Desmond Howard. But somehow or other, they lead to converted third downs here in the second half. They must have been using different boards in the first half. Beyonce was Oh, was it Beyonce? Too. Yeah, it was. Texas native. Very good. I didn't know that. Yeah. Draw play, Jimerson. Look at that run. The sophomore from right here in Dallas. Wills his way for eight yards. I'll tell you what, Clay, I think this is the most productive yardage-wise interior run we've seen all game. And we've seen North Texas get in the end zone with some interior runs. But that's the most yardage I've seen game between the tackles. UNLV's got a man down with 8.48 to go here in the fourth quarter, second and two for North Texas. The man down is Penny Vea, the strong safety from Hawaii for the Rebels. He's being attended to. We step aside here at the heart of Dallas Bowl. When my mom died, Tony really. ESPN, the 100th edition of the Rose Bowl. Number five, Stanford. Number four, Michigan State. The Cardinal trying to win it for the second straight year. In fact, the Cardinal played in the very first Rose Bowl back in 1902. Should be a good one. Back here at the heart of Dallas Bowl at the historic Cotton Bowl. <laughs> Dallas, Texas, Clay Matvick, Matt Stinchcomb, Don Davenport, North Texas with a two-touchdown lead. They've got the ball in UNLV territory. Second down and short. Bird again. First down inside the 40. And the clock will keep moving here for North Texas. That's what they want now. Well, this is something that North Texas got a lot of practice with a year ago. The receiving core kind of underperformed. They had some injuries. A lot of the weight fell to the running game. And Mike Canales said, look, I got bored running the football, but that's all that we could really do proficiently. And that's exactly what North Texas is going to look to do for the balance of this game. They try to squeeze this clock. Thompson patiently. Whips it out to Carlos Harris, and then he lets him do the rest. Look at that. Tight roping that sideline. And gets inside the 30-yard line. Vea finally shouldered him out, but it's an eight-yard pickup. What does he weave his way through would-be Rebel tacklers? Keeping it alive. Picked up a block by Brandon Bird downfield. Vea made him realize maybe he should have stepped out of bounds. I think he probably did right there. Hard to slam on the brakes, and Vea comes in there just to make sure. You see the ref waving his arms. Right now, North Texas, that's effectively just a long handoff. Thompson now 20 completions out of 29 attempts, 222 yards. Bird, penalty flag down, and Bird is going to be close to a first down if the play stands up.
illegal formation. Offense, five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. It will not. You can see Dan McCartney shaking his head, uh, even with the two touchdown lead. And pretty good grasp on, on at least the, the momentum of this ball game. Any of those types of procedural errors where it's not really an error or penalty of commission just drives coaches crazy. Thompson fires. Touchdown, Smith. Darnell Smith caught that pass that was dropped in the bucket by Derek Thompson from 34 yards out. Well, you hit it, Clay, a second ago. Derek Thompson, he chose to stay in this game, got out an injury, and he has played incredibly well here in the second half. And clearly, he and his receivers very much in sync with what they talked about at halftime. But they got on the same page, and that was a perfectly thrown football on what was otherwise a pretty well-covered play by Kenny Pennant. Paul with the extra point. And North Texas may have delivered the haymaker. It's 28 to 7. Mean Green here in Dallas. At the top of the broadcast, Don Davenport talked about senior leadership being a key for the mean green, and we saw it on that last touchdown play. Derek Thompson, the senior, throwing a perfect pass to the senior Darnell Smith, and now it has opened this game up to a 28-7 lead with just seven minutes to go. Yeah, you look at it, that's exactly what these seniors would want to leave as their legacy for North Texas. And we touched on for both of these programs, UNLV, getting to seven wins was a pretty significant milestone for Coach Houck. But they wanted the victory. They need the victory. For any team playing in a bowl game, you want that sensation, that feeling going into your offseason program. Some confusion on the return. Sullivan is the guy that comes away with it. He's dangerous. Look out. To the 40, he stumbles and falls at midfield. UNLV's all-time kickoff return leader, Marcus Sullivan, almost took it back to the house, but he stumbles. And as it happens, it's a 49-yard return. It can turn just that quickly. Unbelievable. Look at this, how he gets upfield so quickly. Nice burst. And I don't think he was touched. I don't know if he was looking to try to get back outside, away from would-be tacklers. He ran faster than his legs could. Either way, great starting field position with close to seven minutes to play. Don't count UNLV out yet. Herring wanted to throw, steps up and runs inside the 45-yard line to the 44. Ryan Boutwell, the defensive tackle, makes the stop. It's a pickup of five. And I wonder still, Clay, you know, he's still mobile looking, but I don't know that Boutwell makes that tackle if Herring didn't have that lower leg injury earlier in the game. Now they go back to Cornette. He's also been dinged up a time or two today. He's able to get just two. Byers makes the stop. So third down coming up here for UNLV. This offense has really struggled since the opening series today when they took it down the field, 95 yards for a touchdown. Well, offensively, really nothing to speak of. And you would think that a big return would spark something for the Rebels on this side of the ball. Herring, incomplete fourth down. We talked about this North Texas defense stinch. It really gets good in the fourth quarter. Seven of the 12 games, they've shut out opponents in the fourth quarter. And all season, they've only allowed 29 points. Second fewest in the FBS. It doesn't bode well, certainly, for the Rebels, who are feeling, obviously, the sense of urgency as the clock winds down under six minutes to try to convert. Incidentally, it's one of the best fourth down defenses you'll find in college football in the mean green. Herring, complete first down to the 35. So UNLV keeps the drive alive on a Herring to Davis completion. A gain of eight. 
is something that we thought we'd be seeing a lot more of this game. But you see Davis able to get Jones turned. He can be physical in his route running as well and gets underneath the coverage to be able to convert. You want to throw on first down, Herring. Throwing on the run to the end zone, has a man incomplete. Batted away from Devontae Davis by James Jones. Who else? He has been very good in that North Texas secondary. And that is the matchup in the red zone when you get in the scoring area, certainly in the end zone where it's advantage Devontae Davis in any jump ball. And Jones just times it perfectly and is enough to disrupt and bat that football away. And keep it in mind, Davis, 6'3", eight of his 14 touchdowns coming into this ball game were red zone catches. Catches thrown in the end zone where they're likely jump balls. Herring gets away from the pressure again. He's going to stay on the hook for a first down and more. And he's dragged down from behind by Laramie Lee at the 13-yard line. You know, now North Texas collapsing the pocket as they did in the previous possession. The difference is there's escape routes in the middle of the pass rush. They're vacating the middle portion where the pass rushers are getting more to the edge and Herring doing a good job of exploiting those opportunities to pull the ball down and run. It's just the fourth first down of the half for UNLV. On first down, quickly to the end zone, touchdown. Jerry Rice Jr., the son of the Hall of Famer. And UNLV shows signs of life here late in the game. This time, North Texas, they do run a containment rush. Herring's got a clean pocket. Jerry Rice Jr. finds himself coming up with a completion in the end zone, something that family has referenced many, many times in the past. The transfer from UCLA and UNLV with a quick seven-play, 50-yard scoring drive in under two minutes. They had to score fast, and they did. And a guy that Matt Stinchcomb played with, Jerry Rice, happy to see his son make a contribution here for UNLV. The ultimate freshness is your winning play. I was on J-Date for less than a day when I met Sarah. My name is Sarah. And my name is Steve. And our story began on J-Date. It's gotta be hard being the son of Jerry Rice and being a football player, but Jerry Rice Jr. made it look pretty easy on that touchdown catch moments ago for UNLV. Well, UNLV took advantage of half a football field off of the return, and Jerry Rice Jr. making like his old man, coming up with a football and a big touchdown catch. You can see father and son there celebrating a pretty special moment, one of many, I'm sure, in a 49er jersey. Looks like a candlestick. You know, a stadium we'll see not much longer anymore. And then, of course, he went on to play with the Oakland Raiders late in his career and got a chance to play with you. Yeah, I mean, or you got a chance to play I was, with I was, him. I was about to say, I don't think Jerry Rice runs around saying, you won't believe who I got to play with. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, I did get a chance to play with him. What an unbelievable talent. And I'm sure one heck of a father and his son demonstrating the, the family hands there in the end zone. You know, V has three timeouts left. I don't have a lot of time left, however. They're down two touchdowns now, but we're under five to go. This is Breland Chancellor. Finds some room and gets to the 40-yard line, and a late hit out of bounds, and a flag comes out. Now, look at, I mean, this is where you got to keep your composure. This game means so much for both of these programs. Tempers flaring. Along that North Texas sideline now. Officials working hard to get everybody separated. What I gotta remember is, you know, you've got 55 minutes of football that you've played. And whatever frustrations, you want to make sure that you don't take it out in an inappropriate way. What looked like to me was a horse collar tackle uh, after the after Chancellor was out of bounds. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. On the kicking team, number 25, 15-yard penalty, first down. And sophomore Brandon Baker. You can see Chancellor, Marcus Sullivan got a great return. 
He want to make sure he wasn't outdone. That is a gruesome looking finish to that play. And of course, North Texas and their teammates taking exception to how that play ended. The officials did a good job, I think, of getting that situation under control quickly. So now North Texas with a two touchdown lead will try and burn clock here and they've got to make sure they protect the football. And that's certainly paramount. I mean, we've seen this. You think back to like a Washington State Colorado State matchup. Mountain West team able to come out with a victory an improbable one at that due to several consecutive fumbles by the Cougars. Thompson away from center gives it to Bird. Three or four yards second down. And a timeout UNLV they have two remaining now clock stops with 440 to go. UNLV under Bobby Houck had an 0 and 2 start this season that man was on the hot seat at that time. But then Caleb Heron came into the game poising Nick Sherry who was having some turnover issues. That was in week three against Central Michigan. You know that was really when the season started to turn in the right direction for the Rebels and here they are in their first bowl game since 2000. You think about the gamble that his brother and Tim Rosenbaugh took in coming to this program because you win two wins have two win seasons three years in a row. They felt like anyway this could have been a good football team but very rarely is that the case when you have to make a change at quarterback three games in and that proved to be the key component to the UNLV's turnaround to make it to be here today. Out deserves a lot of credit. Squaring that all away. Second and seven. Bird. A lot of running for one yard. That might have been one of the most impressive one yard gains I've ever seen. Once again, Tyler Gaston disrupting the play. UNLV now with one timeout as they burn number two. North Texas campus located just about 40 minutes north of Dallas in Denton Texas now in Conference USA after a Sunbelt run the crowd really showing up today in support of this program under Dan McCartney they knew how important it was to him his program and he's really got that going in the right direction now too. And his program, Mean Joe Green. What well, if they sent an email from Mean Joe saying show up or else? <laughs> he got the email. There's Thompson. And now fourth down. And UNLV has used its final timeout. North Texas all time at the Cotton Bowl. See, they've never won here. If they get this one, not only would it end that drought, but it might be the biggest win, Matt, in program history. No question. And part of that's a function of well, they've got a new stadium, they're in a new conference, a relatively young coaching administration as far as their tenure there at North Texas, Dan McCarney doing what he has done best and, and revitalizing this program and they're here in Texas they're right up the road and this is where they have to submit their status in the minds of high school football players here in the state. Masik to punt Sullivan to return standing at the 10 they kick it away from him, and it's going to go out of bounds inside the 10 with 419 to go. It was the first punt of the half for North Texas. They have really taken over this game here since halftime. They've been so effective on third downs. Really no reason to be forced to punt the football away. But as it is, forcing UNLV to carry virtually the, the length of the football field yet again. Keep in mind, the last touchdown scored by the Rebels was on a 50-yard football field after an electric kickoff return by Marcus Sullivan. Texas able to burn a little bit of clock although some of it most of it preserved by UNLV timeouts they no longer have that luxury with four minutes to play and still down the two scores. 
Heron to Davis. Dropped it. Incomplete. That time, Marcus Trice. You see Davis is shaken up. He took a big hit. Uh, he gets up. That's good to see. Has had most in this ball game. You know, Derek Thompson, the quarterback for North Texas, seemingly the most significant injury, and he's the one that was able to make it back out on the field to play. But we've seen guys go down quite a bit. It's always good to see him hop up and head over to the sideline. This has been a hard hitting game. Yeah, there have been a lot of shots taken. Both of these secondaries, really, and run support and some of these patterns over the middle of the field. If you're going to catch the football as a receiver, you are going to earn it. UNLV 3 0 all time in bowl games. They've got a lot of work to do in a short amount of time with no timeouts to change, keep that from changing. Herring intercepted, picked off by Kenny Byers. Eighteenth interception of the year for this mean green defense. Second UNLV turnover. And now North Texas can run out the clock. He's trying to go back to Jerry Rice Jr. That time he was bracketed. Coverage underneath by Kenny Byers and help over the top. And Herring took a shot as he threw. Well advised throw, of course, resulting in the interception. Cement the mean green and what they've been able to do and this is another aspect of their turnaround is the turnovers that they've generated throughout this season they've been very adept at getting the football back fourth in the FBS all those big schools they had 32 coming into this game make it 34 now and Texas will try to run out the last four minutes Bird. As Tyler Gaston makes the tackle, UNLV cannot stop the clock. They're helpless right now, no timeouts. Yeah, and you burned it all up. You had your chance. You know, also, you think about Devontae Davis certainly comes in handy when you're trying to come back, at, come back and carry the link of a football field. He came out after that big shot by Trice. One of Herring ends up, of course, forcing the football. Part of that's just due to the pressure. North Texas kind of came back to form in this ball game. Didn't look themselves in the first half, but certainly the second half, what we came to expect. Bird again. They'd like to get a first down here. I'm sure they can uh, burn as much clock as they can. It's going to go under three minutes before the next snap. Third down at nine. There's Derek Thompson. Left the game in the first quarter with a knee injury. We thought he might be done for the day. Maybe a lesser man would have been, but Derek Thompson comes back in, and he is our Capital One player of the game. Tough old Texan, man. Get back in there. Pop the patella back in there, Doc. I'm <laughs> slap a brace on. I'm going to come back and have a game of my, of my life. After all, Mean Joe Green is on his sideline. If he, if, 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 that's what he's supposed to do, right? That's exactly right. Mean Joe's like, get back in there, son. Rub some dirt on it. Timeout. Here's Derek Thompson's day. All day long, not only just the injury, but the story being able to deliver the football on time, on target, patience, and really that has been the engine of this offense because the ground game has been virtually non existent. North Texas able to take to the air versus what was the finest pass defense in the Mountain West Conference coming into the ball game, one of the strengths of UNLV's defense was the secondary and the play versus the pass, something that was kind of the advent of, of Tim Houck. But that hasn't been the case. They've kind of flipped the script. They were very good versus the run, but it's the passing game that's given them difficult. Two and a half minutes away from claiming the heart of Dallas Bowl. By the way, the heart of Dallas Bowl, the only bowl game where 100% of the proceeds go to charity. Third down and nine with 2.33 to play. A reverse. Chancellor. He's got a lot of green in front. And it's a mean green touchdown.
Freeland Chancellor. Second touchdown. And North Texas really putting an exclamation point on the day. And look who gets a key block. Derek Thompson, quarterback. He's still in there mixing it up. Not only is he willing to throw the football, he'll throw a block to spring. Breland Chancellor. Two touchdowns here today. Both of them rushing touchdowns, incidentally. We've seen him show up in the return game. We've caught some passes, but it's been on the ground where he's been able to get in the end zone. Three plays, 16 yards in a minute 39. Man down in the end zone for the Rebels is Taj Hassan. And he's going to be able to walk off under his own power. You see Breland Chancellor. It's been a totally different year for him in a lot of ways. You know, not only has the return game, as we mentioned, the Special Teams Player of the Year for Conference USA Year One. Nobody has chosen these North Texas guys as All Conference anything. They ended up with 12 guys mentioned at some level of All Conference performance. Breland Chancellor being one of them. And he's made his presence known here tonight, to today rather, in the ground game. Owen with the extra point attempt. It's blocked by UNLV, but it's recovered and run into the end zone. Recovered by Drew Miller, number 86, and that's a two point conversion for North Texas. Buddy Drew Miller doing a great job. <laughs> nice awareness. Got a touchdown early. That's another way to get some points. Jeff Servinsky is our booth official today, helping us out on the broadcast. And Jeff, you don't see this every day. No, you don't. Um, but by rule, as long as the ball does not go beyond the line of scrimmage, it's a live football and can be advanced. So the ball is blocked, stayed behind the neutral zone, can be advanced by either team. Great awareness by Drew Miller to get on that football and get it upfield. Second block of the game, the first one negated by that timeout. And just yet another way for the mean green to get on the scoreboard. You heard Jeff say, as long as it doesn't go beyond the line of scrimmage, that ball is live. And like you said, Miller, Johnny on the spot, aware, knew what to do with it, took it in for a two-point conversion. Now, my only disappointment with this play, as you see it get blocked, is that number 57, Mason Y. Barbo, doesn't come up with it. <laughs> the badge. Why? Because he's the lineman? Yeah, because he's a lineman. That guy's been hustling all game. He got a get big fumble recovery to maintain a possession on what ended up being the first touchdown drive. They only score through three quarters. And you know, nice awareness by the guy. He's not just blocking folks, he wants to get the football. Did you ever take one into the end zone as a lineman in your days in college at Georgia or in the NFL? During a game when it counted? Yeah. No. Oh. I kind of suspected that. That's why I asked the question. Well, Boy Barbo's already got another rushing touchdown on the year. I figured he'd give him another chance to get a two-pointer. That goes through the end zone. And look at the smiles on that North Texas sideline. They knew how important this game was to the program. And they were going to have essentially a home crowd behind them today. They wanted to come out here and deliver, and they have. Well, you, know, you, you make your coaches proud, your family, your, your student body, something that Coach McCarney has been very pleased with the student body being very enthusiastic about what's going on at North Texas football. You make me Joe happy. I wonder how mean Joe is right now with a, what ends up being a very decisive win for his team. Break out a couple of smiles in the new year. I'll bet he's a teddy bear right now. Caleb Herring, the senior, throwing deep. That's going to land incomplete, stopping the clock with 2.18 to go. Caleb Herring, really got to tip your hat to him. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the way he helped turn this season around for the Rebels. Coming in in week three, he was playing wide receiver for the most part last year. They needed him. He settled the offense down, got him to a bowl game. Selfless, I think, is a good word to describe Caleb Herring. And they mentioned 
You know, he's moved to a different position, but he's just a natural leader. And he rallied this football team out of what looked to be another slide. You know, they could have easily slid back into mediocrity, maybe even sub-mediocrity. The coaching staff as well, grateful for what Caleb Herring was able to bring to this football team this year. down incomplete fourth down for UNLV with 211 to go coming up after we leave the air the trophy presentation from the heart of Dallas Bowl here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas Texas you'll be able to see that on ESPN 3 you know, really classic we mentioned it earlier but you know, the Dallas area they needed North Texas to win this game. It's been kind of a, a dismal year for that regard when it comes to the, the sport of football. You lose your Cowboys and incapable of making it to the postseason. Ooh, and Herring sacked again. Zach Orr this time. And that's the fifth sack. Herring picks himself up, and North Texas is going to win the 2014 Heart of Dallas Bowl. You see they're coming with the Gatorade bucket. Of course, it's, too, it's always two offensive linemen because they're inconspicuous, you know. Those are the guys that can really sneak up on you. <laughs> Dan McCartney, whether he knows it or not, he seems to be going the right direction away from him. He's going to be regretting that short sleeve shirt here in a minute. Johnson and Y. Barbo are the ones, and he can tell, you know, he's a hunted man at this point. So he's staying on the move. It's going to be a nine-win season for North Texas. Andrew McNulty got a couple of snaps in the first quarter when Thompson left the game with that knee injury. Hands off. There's the bucket of Gatorade, or maybe it's just water. Either way, it lands on Dan McCartney, and he is happy to take it. Well, you know, this is the culmination of a lot of hard work by that coaching staff. Huh? They, they, you can tell there's genuine affinity amongst these coaches and really between the players and the coaches. You can see that these guys, they got a, a fun cast of characters at North Texas and now a very successful one. And around this time. T Garden takes it. Knocked down, third down. After the loss of three, clock moving, minute 15 to go, UNLV out of timeouts. You know, so going back to this Dallas area, you know, SMU, they didn't have a very good year, didn't make it to the postseason. TCU, North Texas, the lone representative in postseason play. And now, of course, next year, open the season on the road in Austin versus the Longhorns as they transition. Who's going to be the coach there? And I, think, I think the coach in Austin is the guy who's going to be coaching the national title game. From the capital of Florida. Jimbo Fisher yeah. is your guy for that job? Yeah, I think it's Jimbo Fisher. I think that would be the, the closest to a surefire hire that Steve Patterson could make. Hey, I got to say, it's been a fun year with you again. Good times, Clayton. Happy New Year to you and your family. We uh, thank everybody who worked on the ESPNU crew this year. And to you watching today, it's, it's been a fun game. UNLV will take over here with 36 seconds to go. Hugs on that North Texas sideline. Dan McCartney, third year head coach of a program that was in tough shape when he took over. Took a couple of years to get things sorted out. They're going to win nine games here this year. And the heart of Dallas Bowl right in their backyard. And you look at them, and there's a chance to be pretty good next year. I mean, there's some seniors that they'll lose. Certainly Chancellor being a key component of those. Derek Thompson, another. But they're going to get an offensive line back largely intact. And the hope is, if you're a North Texas fan, this is the first of many seasons that end with a victory in a bowl game. Dan McCartney. 
and Bobby Howe both did great jobs with their programs this year. But it's his mean green of North Texas victorious here in the heart of Dallas Bowl. And Don has got coach. Coach, first bowl win for this program in over a decade. I saw the hugs over there. What's this one mean for this team? Unbelievable. I'm just so happy, Don, for these 22 seniors. Time stands still for no one. And how do you want to be remembered? Well, they defined it today how they wanted to be remembered as champions. And they've done it on the field. They've done it in the classroom. They've done it in our community. They've done it here in the state of Texas. Can't tell you how proud I'm of this football team, my staff, and especially these seniors. You talk about these seniors. Your quarterback. Thompson was amazing, played through a knee injury. What can you say about his gutsy performance? Gutsy, as you said, resolve, toughness, pride. Uh, the loyalty in this program just permeates through everywhere. And then nobody wants to let, let anybody down. That's what it's all about. I'm really proud of DT and all these kids. Coach, I'll let you celebrate. Congrats. Thanks a lot, Dawn. Happy New Year. Great way to start 2014 for Dan McCartney, his family, and the family at North Texas. 36-14 the final. Thanks for joining us here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas on ESPN3, the post-game trophy presentation. For Matt Stinchcomb and Don Davenport, I'm Clay Matvick. Happy New Year, everyone. We now send it to a niche in the studio for Sports Center U. All right, Clay, happy new year to everybody watching. And he's Shroff alongside former Georgia quarterback David Green, the mean green of North Texas. Get a bowl win as they knock off UNLV 7-7 game at the half. What was the difference in the second half? Well, it shows you what, how little I know. I, I said Brandon Bird needs to come out and run the ball 50 times a game, but it ended up being the, the formula was Derek Thompson throwing it 30 times. If I were to guess, he would certainly be the MVP of the game. Yeah, you thought going into this game, if North Texas could run the ball and UNLV came in with one of the worst run defenses in the nation you figured that would be the formula for success but who knows right that's that's why we're in here and they're out there <laughs> the North Texas fine effort from their quarterback and the mean green celebrate there you can see Derek Thompson's numbers 21 of 30 256 two TDs and uh, UNLV some costly turnovers in that second half which kind of took any chance of a comeback out of play. No question. And, and you go back, you talk about North Texas. What a huge win for them. The first bowl game since 2004. You could see Coach right after doing the post game, how excited he was and how this this whole program just came together. Yeah, this was a team that won four games last year. And congratulations to UNLV, a fine season. They had won more than two games the previous three seasons. You can watch the trophy presentation of that game on ESPN3. Nebraska, Georgia, Aaron Murray just looking on out for the season with a torn ACL. This was the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. Todd Gurley stretching on fourth and one from the Husker 31. Gets the first down. It led to a Georgia field goal. Nebraska came into the game minus 12 in turnover margin. They get one here. Reggie Davis muffs the punt. Huskers recover. Yeah, you can't do that. This was certainly a defensive struggle. I know the elements were, uh, weren't ideal, but if you're Reg Davis, you cannot do that right there. Ensuing drive, Tommy Armstrong Jr., Quincy Anunua. Anunua's 11th touchdown reception of the season. That ties a school record. Third quarter, Amir Abdullah. Two great running backs in this game, Gurley, and let's not forget about Abdullah. Well, we kept on talking about it before the game. Todd Gurley against Amir Abdullah. Whoever had the most yards rushing would probably win, and that, that was certainly the case today. Near disaster for Nebraska. That's not a safety. Tommy Armstrong down at the one yard line. Take another look. Watch where the elbow. Oh, boy. Wow. The elbow goes down, and it's where the ball is. A safety almost. By that much, Nebraska escapes. And on the next play from the one yard line oh. to a new one, 99 yards, the longest play in bowl history. I don't know his 12th touchdown catch. That sets a school record. What a turn of events. Well, I tell you, in Georgia's secondary has really played poor all season long. Let's not forget Josh Harvey Clemens got suspended along with Sheldon Dawson. Came back and really hurt him right there. All right, so no Aaron Murray out with that knee injury. Hudson Mason to Todd Gurley. Gurley 86 yards rushing, 97 receiving. Georgia back in the game within one score. 30 seconds, fourth and three, down five. Uh, Hardy Lynch, but, and I tell you, fourth and three is the right call. And, and he's been the guy year after year. He makes that play. Obviously, the elements were tough, but you got to come down with that catch right there. You know, we're sitting here in the studio watching the game, and 
on third and ten the previous play Georgia ran the football you said might not be a bad idea to run it on fourth down and three as well. Well and that's the tough part there is if you do it and you don't get it everybody's going what was the play that's right. a terrible play call. Fourth and three right there. Uh, it was the right play call. He was open. Just dropped it. Nebraska gets a win. That's big for Bo Pelini. He can breathe a little easier this offseason. Janine Edwards caught up with the Huskers head coach after the game. Coach, congratulations. What a thrilling finish to a year that you described as long and tough. What are you feeling right now in this way that you've put a cap on your season? You know, I'm, I'm proud of that group of men. And, uh, you know, I've said all along, they showed a lot of character this year, overcame a lot of adversity, obviously the injuries and the things that, uh, and that group of seniors deserved to go out on top. And uh, that was a heck of a football game. That was a fun game to, to be a part of. And uh, I give George a lot of credit. And uh, um, that was a heck of a game. The play with Quincy and Nunwa, that 99 yard run. Where did you come up with that play? Was it executed the way you thought it would be, or was it a spontaneous thing that just evolved? No, we decided, you know, it was, kind of goes back to what happened at Penn State. You know, we, we were backed up, and we were, you know, they were going to put all their guys up there, and we decided to take a shot and figured, hey, if, if it doesn't work out, we either punt it or it'll be like a, a, a long punt. And um, Coach Beck made a great call, and uh, Quincy was wide open. Tommy made a great throw, and any Burrow could tackle, which uh, that was a huge point in the game. It sure was. You told us keys for you defensively would be to stop Gurley and to contain their screen game. What made you guys so effective defensively today? Well, you know what? Uh, Gurley's a heck of a player, and uh, I thought we did a pretty good job on him for the most part, but, uh, you know, he's going to get his yards, and uh, they do a really good job, but we didn't give up any big plays or many big plays, and uh, they had a couple opportunities and missed them, and um, I thought that we... Uh, I thought overall, I just thought we executed our game plan very well. We communicated well, and, and we were really good in the red area. Well, you know, the last time we saw you after a game, you were at a presser saying, if they want to fire me, they can fire me. What is it like for you now to be standing here giving these players their first bowl win? Well, I thought it was big. You know, the last time, uh, you know, last time, I guess, was a couple of years ago that we've won a bowl, and we finished the game on a high note. And... Um, like I said, there was a lot of things that went into all that. And, you know, fortunately for me, I got a great athletic director. I have great support. And, uh, um, you know, and I'll tell you, we're, I look forward to next year with this football team because we got a lot of guys back. We got a lot of pieces. And, and if we keep making the progress, uh, we can be a force to be reckoned with. I think so. And I know one thing, your players have your back. No doubt. So. It's a good group of guys. Congratulations, Bo. Thanks, Jane. All right, so Nebraska wins the rematch. Nebraska and Georgia played in a New Year's Day Bowl last year. This win for Bo Pelini seems to be bigger in, in the sense that fan support is really what he needs to win back more than maybe internal support at Nebraska. I think there's no question, and I think he said it perfect. In this game, the difference was the red zone. Georgia came away with four field goals and one touchdown, but Bo Pelini, they really didn't have a whole lot of momentum coming into this game. I was impressed the way they came out and played today. All right, so Nebraska gets the win against Georgia in the Gator Bowl. Capital One Bowl, Wisconsin and South Carolina, a couple of top 20 teams. One year ago today, South Carolina in the Outback Bowl. David, I don't know if you've seen this play before. This is the first time I've seen this, Anish. <laughs> what a great hit, though. I'll give him that. And then we expected him to do that every game all season. That's it right. didn't happen, so we buried Jadavion Clowney. This is likely Clowney's final game as a South Carolina Gamecock. A uh, little... Trickeration by Steve Spurrier going into the play with Bruce Ellington to Connor Shaw. You know, I always wanted one of those. I just tell the heck the uh, offense coordinator <laughs> George and Mike Bobo, I said, just give me one of those, and he never did. Joel Stave to Jeff Duckworth, Wisconsin up by one going into the half. Third quarter, Connor Shaw to Bruce Ellington. Ellington threw one to Shaw. What a catch. Fourth Shaw and seven, on fourth and seven finds Ellington for the first down. And then later in the drive, Ellington, second touchdown reception of the game. South Carolina up 20 to 17 now up 27 to 17 Kenzel do 91 yards to the house the mischievous Badgers How about in this game ball? 27 to 24 uh, we talked about Connor Shaw before we came on the air 22 of 25 312 yards three touchdowns he's also caught a touchdown his final game is a Gamecock what a career he has had in Columbia I'm telling you, he's one of the most underrated players in the country 
And how about Bruce Ellington as well? Looks like both of those guys right now are fighting for the MVP of the game. Has 140 yards receiving and also a touchdown pass. South Carolina with the ball up three, coming up on eight minutes to play in the fourth. Outback ball, Iowa taking on LSU. True freshman Anthony Jennings making his first career start. Remember Zach Mettenberger out for the season with a torn ACL. A lot of run plays early by LSU. Jennings this time on the keeper. Tigers take the 7-0 lead early in the first quarter. Second quarter, LSU 